those out of your way. Okay. Uh, and uh, thank you for coming, everyone. So this is Courage and Chaos. This is Dungeons and Dragons for Absolute Beginners. And uh, we teach everybody here D&D from the ground up. This is the 10th uh, session that you've ever played from being absolute beginners, and you're learning a lot. Uh, you're really at the stage where you probably can go to any beginner-oriented table already. But there's a lot of tables that aren't even very beginner-friendly. So the more experience you get around this table, I think you'll be even more ready. But you're, you're ready now, so congratulations for getting, getting this far. It's still very important that you stop and ask questions. You know, we really want to teach people how to play, and you asking questions helps each other, helps people watching this video. Uh, but this is just a classic D&D uh, &D campaign uh, that, uh, that is going through step at a time. Uh, and we've already done the story so far. Uh, that's another recording for those of you watching this video. There's a different recording that catches you up. So let me just talk about the scene that you're at right now. You are in an elven village called Nyladel. You are in a beautiful set of uh, uncut forest, pristine trees. And uh, those of you who are on this end of the map here, which I will actually show to our, our, our viewers. Uh, so on this, whoops, so on this end of the map down here, uh, you're on a walkway among uh, a tree house, uh, sort of an elven tree house that uh, is built on the sides without even scratching the bark or bending or cutting a single branch. These walkways that you're on are all made of natural wood that fell a long time ago and lived out its life and it was, was now carefully integrated in these narrow walkways that you're going. The circles are all trees uh, they can move around and those trunks provide some cover. The blobs around are uh, bushes uh, that you learn these goblins, which are the yellow and white chips, are able to hide in as they try to approach. The goblins are here to try to get into this treehouse because you know they need to get the machinery that I described in my previous uh, little synopsis. They want to steal the machinery. You know they're going to kill along the way. They're going to kill, set fires, do whatever required to get the machinery from the sort of crafting village. You can imagine this is what these elves apparently do. They, they do a lot of sort of crafting and selling of goods. So they have machinery to steal. They want to attack you is fine, but they really want to attack you as a means to get inside. So your, uh, your dilemma is not just how to protect your own lives, but by letting the goblins, you can maybe protect yourself by getting out of the goblins' way, but then the, go the elves themselves are going to be in trouble as they go in. Uh, we are going to show you a bit of this here. So that's the story so far. So we have a picture here of what, your, uh, what the Nyladel village looks like. I'll show you here on my laptop, it sort of set the mood here. So you're up in these high trees. These are about 20 feet off the ground. <laughs> yes, feel free to translate <laughs> yourself. It means nothing in feet, I'm so sorry. There you go. So you're up high in this beautiful forest. And these walkways behind you that sort of blur into nothing there are ways in that if any goblin goes down those walkways, then they are basically very going to be very hard to find as they run around and uh, raise havoc, kill and steal as they go. So uh, at this moment, we're going to zoom in on all of our players, all of our characters, and see how you are feeling at this moment when you're in the middle of combat. It's about to be the goblin's turn. Uh, Oliver over here is playing Saryeth. And Saryeth is a high elf wizard, level two. Uh, how is Saryeth looking and feeling right now? Saryeth is wondering about what the hell is wrong with goblins? Just what is wrong with goblins? Right, yeah, you're trying to figure out what's motivating. They're so determined. They're putting their lives on the line. They're terrified or they're so motivated that they're, they're coming across these terrible odds, realizing you're very strong adventurers, but still they keep on coming to get these machines. What's motivating them? That, that's a good thing for Saryeth to puzzle over, I agree. Michael here is playing Fogram. Uh, Fogram, he is a dwarf, cleric level two. Uh, and what is Fogram doing? Yeah, he's right really now? enjoying being in the middle of uh, the combat. Sure. And, and oh, I've been getting, a, get, getting a bit of a battle lust going, I suppose, while he's yeah. flailing about. Yeah, you've been itching for a good combat for a while, as that's I recall. Right. So yeah. uh, I think that's this is a great moment for you, Fogram. All right. Uh, we have Sean here is playing Shudian. Shudian is a human level, a uh, human fighter, level two. Uh, and uh, what's Shudian like and doing right now? Thinking of which goblin to um, implant a, a great axe into. <laughs> <laughs> great. Hefting your axe eagerly. Already a bit of blood on that axe, as I recall. That's good. Keep on going. Olenka here is playing Shmaragd. Uh, they are a Dwarven Cleric, level 2. And uh, what is Shmaragd uh, looking or feeling like now? So Shmaragd is trying to see if they can 
get in tune with Celia, the crossbow, um, and now that they've got this new weapon, they're trying to work out how can they really just wake Celia, work, <laughs> and be in tune and be of the same mindset You're and right, be like Celia, in, one, Celia. In, in one mind. <laughs> okay, that's great. That's kind of fucking creepy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jimmy here is playing Vol. Vol, he is a human fighter level two. Uh, what do we notice about Vol right now? He's trying to forget about the ballad of the uh, goblin survivor that, was, <laughs> that we had here before. Right. While trying hard not to die at the same time. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so definitely a game of survival on both sides. All right. Uh, we have Anthony here is playing Gammy. Gammy, uh, he is a halfling rogue, I think level two now. I'd correct that, I had that down wrong. Very good. Uh, Gammy has uh, come back to a heroic status after following the group in the background for a little while. So what is Gammy making of all this as goblins come swarming through the forest towards you up here on the walkway? Uh, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I have a vantage point, no. but there's still a lot of them. There still are a lot of them. That's great. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Uh, as we take a look at the map again, and uh, this is just a continuation of what we were doing before, which is a set piece combat. So just to remind you that this is uh, squ crunchy square by square combat where we tighten up the rules, we follow strictly what your spells and abilities do. Sometimes we do loose combat and we do loose interpretation. Now we're gonna teach sort of strict D&D &D combat round by round. Um, and there's a few useful tactics to keep in mind. Enemies are using cover to hide. Uh, you'll learn, you've already learned they fire with advantage if they're firing from that cover. So stopping them from hiding is important. Um, and uh, that's based on your perception. You can take actions to reveal ones that are hiding if you choose to use your action. You can hold an action. It hasn't been necessary because you have so many targets, but if there's ever a goblin you really have an eye on this that's uh, invisible to you, you can say on your turn, I hold my action so that when a goblin comes out of that bush, or maybe when that goblin that you saw go in comes out of that bush, I'm going to shoot it. So that uses your reaction. Uh, you can use a spell or a weapon to do that. So you can pick your target called holding an action. It's very important for enemies that do this sort of thing. You're going to deal with a, you're dealing with a rel large number of relatively easy to kill enemies. They're swarming towards you. That's a bit different than usual. And they're swarming towards an objective, right? They're, they're obje your objective is, of course, probably to kill or stop them. But their objective is not necessarily to kill you. It's to get past you into this treehouse. And failing to do that is not just about you dying. It's about NPCs dying. That's a bit different than usual. Well, let's restart initiative after my goblin turn. But let me just do my goblin turn uh, as it is. Uh, well, initiative inter interrupts everything, so let's, and you'll want to be ready. So everybody roll initiative. We're doing the four, one of the last times, clockwise versus counterclockwise cool. initiative. Call out your number. Oh. Remember, you roll the d20 and add yes. your, uh, yes, okay. there's an initiative box, which is, well, for everybody, is your dexterity bonus. Oh. Uh, is what your dexterity is. Is what your initiative is. <laughs> Zero. Oh. <laughs> 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 I got minus one, mate, so. Yeah. Call out more. 19. 19, woo! Yeah. 11. Okay. Yep. Okay. Nobody higher than 18 or 19? No. Okay. So we'll start and be one, two, three to get out. So either way. So we'll start with you. Uh, what are you what are your two initiatives? One. <laughs> well, well, zero, we'll get away from you. So we'll go this way. Yeah. So we'll start with you and we'll go counterclockwise. Okay. Okay, great. And that's just a quick, simple way to do initiative when you got a table this large and we're still getting new to initiative. But we will do proper initiative very soon once you're in the shrine. But I'm going to start with the goblin turn. Now, as we go, uh, I will be going through and uh, firing as necessary. These ones with the red circles are asleep, having been cast that spell by Saryeth. Mm -hmm. And uh, that means that we'll start with this one, which is wounded. If it's flipped over where you can't see his colored rim, that means it's wounded and it's very easy to kill. This one really wants to get away from you. And this is where you learn that goblins are able to disengage as a bonus action, which means that as it runs away, one, two, three, four, five, six, it is uh, able to not provoke opportunity attacks from you. And it still has uh, the opportunity to hide, uh, which it does. Now it's disengaged for free. It can hide for free, but it chose to disengage instead. So I think it's going to scamper in there, and it's going to then use this action to try to hide. When I do so, it'll go up against your... Okay, it is visible. <laughs> so it, you know exactly where it is. It had to score more than 13. Has to score, yeah, at least a 13 in order to do 13. that. Okay. 
these two white goblins I didn't mention, uh, they've taken that thing, that star that was there. This was a, a, a bait that you put down. It was a very nicely attracted, what was it? A free, what, just it was, it was just some machinery. Whatever that the we scraps had. that we could get oh, from. Yeah, yeah. The, um, it's all lit up. And, it was, yeah, and, and you created some rumbling over here. To you're basically trying to create a kill zone. And you have. You've light shining on it. Yes, light shining. You've steered them over here to create a bit of a kill zone uh, because this is an unattractive area that the rumbling is scaring them off. You've done this successfully. These two showed up, grabbed it, and they ran off. They said they're going to form their own clan. They're holding the machinery you took from the elves as bait, uh, but now they're getting away with it. And these goblins are protesting, but they've, they've come in and they're already sort of got a head start. So you don't think these goblins are going to be able to chase them down. If you choose, sort of as a stretch goal, if you take out these goblins here, at least you won't lose that machinery uh, to the goblins because you know that's something. And that, we do uh, need to get the elves back on I, our sides. Yeah, you want to make if you want to make sure the elves are on side. A tree on are, they fire? are they likely to be slowed? They've got plenty of trees. <laughs> is it like a heavy encumbrance for them to? No, it's not. This is this is stuff where yeah they're able to go at full speed. Unfortunately, is this machine is this decoy machinery not junk? No, it's actual good machinery. Oh, yeah, yeah, you had to convince them to do good machinery. Mm, could, so. Oh, wow. Would one, would one of the other goblins try to stop them from uh, running away? They was just, they're so away? occupied with the enemies mm. here. Like, they, mm. they, they're sort of waiting for their moment. They jumped in at an in opportune time that they're probably, they're almost certainly going to use their turn to keep on running, and these goblins won't be able to do much about it because they're already kind of engaged in combat. I see one right near them. That I know, that's hiding. true. And this one has a bead next to it. But let's go with this mm. one was hidden. And it's going to want to. I thought they were both sleeping. Yeah, no, they're both oh, sleep. That's right. Sleep. So number two is asleep. Yeah. Yeah. Number three over here is hidden and not asleep. And it's going to pick its target. So from its hidden position, it's going to look for who seems to be a threat. I'd say that either these two seem to be a threat up here. I think this with the axe also is a threat. Um, now, remember, anytime that I'm picking a target, if one of you is a tank, like someone who wants to absorb damage, and they're considering attacking someone you know, who's easier to hit, you know, you always say, like, I'm going to try to take the hit yourself. There's a bit of sort of light sort of aggro drawing that you can do. But as it scans around, it starts citing the two people up here. Mm -hmm. uh, and unless somebody interrupts me, I'm going to just do even versus odd between those mm -hmm. two. Odd is going to be you, Gammy. So this one is going to shoot at you. Because okay. it was hidden, it has advantage on its first shot. Mm -hmm. well, at least you don't have one health thing. Mm. Yeah, that no, yeah. Devastating. Yeah. Uh, while I boot up my program here. Mm -hmm. Oops, that's a cock die. I always reroll cock dice. You must mm -hmm. always do it. It's not perfectly flat. Even if it, oh. it looks like a 14, I'll do your benefit of rolling it again. It's cocked again. Uh, 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 that is, we just move it. Celia over here. Oh, uh, that's no, no. Celia's fine. I like, I like no, having Celia on there. This is not even mine. Um, <laughs> advantage, we'll take eight. Now, no, 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 no. We, 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 we take a thirteen it's plus the goblin's table. bonus against your uh, uh, armor class is yeah. a fourteen. So you are not going to get hit. A goblin bolt comes towards you. It is five points of damage against you, Gammy. I just roll I just want to remember yeah. about the goblins while this thing boots up. Mm -hmm. Again, I use the computer to do this just because it's faster. You could do everything I'm doing just with paper and books. I just find mm -hmm. that when I'm traveling, it's just good to use the computer for this sort What's of thing. What's the thing that you said, the debate or die? Uh, I don't have that right. So, uh, well, what about, about this? Uh, so, I used to take five points of damage. No, so. before that. About the die being uneven? Oh, um, yeah. So if, if it lands, if it's not perfectly flat on the surface, mm -hmm. you must always re-roll it. Oh, dice. is that cock, the rule? Cock die was my mm -hmm. house rule. Oh, sure. Uh, pardon? It was my, my house rule. Oh, okay, just because it's ambiguous. For yeah, because it's ambiguous, exactly. Okay. These things are powerful creatures. So this one here is revealed itself. So the second time it takes a shot at, uh, this time at you, mm -hmm. Olenka, mm -hmm. or uh, Smaragd, uh, it is going to not have advantage. And with a 15, mm -hmm. Uh, what's your armor class? 18. 18. You hold up your shield, uh, you get, get a strong part of your armor, and it does not do any damage. It goes there, and once it fires, it moves a little bit closer, and it's going to try to now hide. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, sorry, that number was three. that was num number three. Yeah. So it fires from here. It goes, oh, man, it doesn't want to be next to all these people like, like casting sleep and all that stuff. One, two, snow, can't make it over there. That looks too dangerous. You're, you're sort of boxing them in. Them yeah, in. exactly. Just just came from there. All right, it's gonna it's gonna take a chance. It's gonna come in here, and it's going to try to. Uh, and these two are they here? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So I guess it doesn't want to. It doesn't, it doesn't want to go to sleep. This this one's really stuck. It's going to do an action. Oh, it da starts to dash over here. Really, dash over here. Right. It uses action because it wants to get away from here and away from here. And then it hears this rumbling that you've done. And it's terrified. It sort of stops there and now sort of looking around and it just uses the rest of its turn just sort of stopped by your uh, your action there. It's right out of the open. Number three is vulnerable. Can I just check? 
Can it do dash as an action if it's already taken two shots? Uh, so it can dash. It's taken. It can dash as a as, so it can dash as its bonus action. Bonus action. Yeah. So okay. some things. So uh, goblins have some special ability to do some things as a bonus action. So why was it able to take two oh, shots? Actually. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so yeah. all the goblins. This is the way I'm tuning this. So. Uh, in my video, I explained from the DM's perspective, I'm treating each of them as actually a pair of goblins as far as damage output goes. Okay. As far as damage input goes, there are only one goblin. Because the way this fight balances, you're strong enough to actually be taking on a larger number. I just don't have a larger number of chips. So oh. what I'm doing is I'm having monsters fire twice and act sort of like two monsters in that regard. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. But okay. I think I might be wrong about that bonus. It can, it can disengage or hide as bonus action, but not dash. So it starts. So because it, it disengaged from there in the first place, didn't it? Yeah, that's right. It um, didn't disengage. No, no, it it's fired. The one did. Sorry, yeah, yeah, this 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 one fired. This one just tries to get closer. So one, two, three, four, five. So and it moves it around here. Use its movement at the start because it was around here first before it came over there to make the shots. Uh, no, it was hidden in there. So okay. the, there's a bead on it over yeah. there. It's very good to, to mention these things, though. Yeah. I don't mind it at all. So it can. So the goblins potentially can move anywhere. If, Inside those circles. Yeah, so what I do in the bead, it means that you don't know where in the bush they are mm -hmm. because they might use the rest of their movement to sort of move and crawl around while hidden because yep. they're maintaining cover. This one is going to move a little bit out of turn and do something fun. It moves in here. It, uh, it tries to hide. And... <laughs> yes, it does. It successfully hides. I thought the perception was 13. Yeah. I know, but I know I know how high his bonus is. Oh, okay. I, now you know there's bonuses of plus six. So now you figure out the goblins have a plus six on their hide. Very high for that. Sleep isn't a fog, is it? No. Mm, do you want to do fog? No, no, I'm, I'm just th thinking if it <coughs> goes, <coughs> goes into the sleep. sleep As it goes in, you hear over, you hear like, hey, wake up, wake up. You know, just as it goes in, and you think that this one is no, this one is no longer asleep. An action can wake it up, so it's used as action to activate another goblin. And it is hidden as there as well. <laughs> all right. Aren't they opposing goblins there? Yeah. No, no, they're all the same. They're the same clan. The, the color here, these two, they're in the same clan. These two have defected. I'm just reusing that color of theirs for convenience. Uh, this one over here. So I, I'm off a little bit. So this was number two. We skipped before. Oh, so I skipped number two before. Let's not skip number two because it's just gotten awakened up. This one's now awake. It was lying down because it was asleep. It, as a result, has to spend some of its movement standing up, but even so, it only use half its movement as enough to get to the other bush. It's going to start moving, and when it starts to fire, it sees only really one target that really isn't interested in, which is who's the book? Who's who's the book? It's I'm you. The book. <laughs> mm -hmm. I've got a tree in front of me. I do not have a tree. No, he doesn't. So it fires with advantage, and a 15, I believe, is a pretty dangerous for you, wizard. <sighs> yep. <laughs> 17 hit points damage. That's right. <laughs> I'm rolling this fair and square. I rolled the most I could. Eight points of piercing damage that you're hit oh, up there. Oh, wait, no, no. <laughs> one. Oh, you're down to one. Where's your devil now, mate? That's right. <laughs> this one's <laughs> invisible by doing that, and so it's able to shoot a second time. It's going to be back from somewhere. Yeah. Oh my! Yeah. <laughs> this time it rolls a twenty-three against you, the same target. Should and I just explode? <laughs> <laughs> no, because you it's take possible, out everything. It's possible to get killed in one shot, but you have to, I'd have to roll a lot of damage, way more damage than is possible. So you are down, I believe. <laughs> I think I've got no head anymore. You're not a negative, so we need to get that that uh, one back up. When it comes around to this turn, you'll do a death saving throw. You do not want to let your friends do death saving throws. It takes them out of the action, I'm, and other bad I'm things happen you, as a result. <laughs> I'm not looking at you for that reason. <laughs> so down is this one. That was the number two. They skip back. Uh, number four over here is still asleep. Number five is asleep. And then we'll go into the white ones. The white one and two, they just start to take off. I'm going to keep them on the map just for convenience sake, but they are just going to run, they're going to dash as fast as possible. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. They're, they're not going to hide or anything like, well, they try to hide. So they go to this bush and they try to hide. Go after the two of them are running because the machinery is really heavy. We're going to have to put a heavy. bit of force in here. But no, two of them no. running because they've just yeah, decided, like, basically, your trap, like, like, your, like, your trap sort of worked, or your, your lure yeah. worked, and that they're out of the battle. You don't have to fight them. It's just that they have, they're taking the machinery away. This is a stretch goal for you. They're not a threat to kill the elves, but they are a threat to steal this. The first one does not hide. The second one does not hide. So you can see exactly where they are running towards that bush. That is number one and two. 
Oh, I was more saying if we take one out, are they, is the other one still able to carry the machinery? Is it too heavy for one? No, they, they each have little bits of machinery. So they, oh. uh, they, they each have a, a separate little handful so of machinery. So we might save half of it. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's right, exactly. Mm. Better than nothing. <laughs> this one already used its action to wake up, but it also successfully hid. So you know this over there. And finally, the goblins are done. We're going to start with you and go counterclockwise. So get ready when your turn. Have some idea what get you're going to do okay. when they do. Oh, it doesn't count. 17. I'm not dead. Okay, yet. so... Every time you do a death save, you mark your successes mm -hmm. and failures. A 10 or higher is a success. If he fails three times, he is dead dead. Uh, there are some bad things that happen when you're down, but considering this, if this happened right at the top of initiative, I won't use it against you right now. But do get this one back up. What are you going to do? Shoot you on. Um, I'm going to try and route these ones. So, okay. Um, here, so. Um, I guess to try and <laughs> yeah, get, gonna go on, for those? get on this side of them. All right, yeah, so, yeah. yeah, just go and pick out where you're going to go. I think the, the map is all pretty all visible right, there. So what are we, six? It's always best to count four. out with your finger before you move your chip. It's always best to count out with your finger about where you think the destination is, because I might interrupt you for some reason, we want or you might want to rewind it. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, you're kind of cutting them off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Very good. Now you can second. dash. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you take an action, you can move twice as far. Mm -hmm. You'd be next to them, which means that they provoke an opportunity. Well, of course, they can disengage is the problem. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, they're, they're slippery. Uh, uh, Trying to cut these. them off. So, yeah. And they can go in any direction from this. From this, from this uh, so don't let the map fool you. There's like mm -hmm. forest in every direction. Yeah. You've got your javelins. Yeah. Well, I can see them. So I might as well just take a attack at one of them. OK. Yeah. All right. So you kind of get in their way. And maybe with fighting from a distance, you're going to try to hit one of them. What's it going to be? A javelin. Okay, go for it. Yeah. Um. Oh, yes. Boom! Yeah. Natural 20. So all the dice you roll twice. So look up your javelin damage. Yeah. Uh, no, so uh, oh. that, that's uh, not a damage die. It's a die. D6. D6. Yep, there you um. go. So take a D6, but instead of one D6, this you're going to roll two of them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, have your own dice. That's good. So I was, you know, <laughs> okay. Yep. Yep, and roll it again. And then next to the word javelin, you've got a plus next to the word uh, javelin on your sheet. Yeah, plus five, yeah. Okay, so what's your total? Um, using the two of those was seven um, plus five, 12. Woo, this one's dead. You want to kill oh. one or two? Oh, Number we'll one. one. Yeah. All right, that one goes down. Very good. Okay. You grabbed the machine? Uh, he's a little bit far away, and his turn has to end there. He, that's as far as he could possibly we could move. We grab it later. Yes, that's right. Yeah, so let's uh, just just put a little, use that to just mark a little little M for some machinery is over there. But uh, the other one's arms are full, mm -hmm. so it won't be able to take it. Apparently, oh, good okay. job. Okay, yeah. good. That's Shu Dian. Next will be you, Gami. Yeah. And uh, again, uh, if you're next after a player, just be ready to go with your mm -hmm. dice and whatever your plan is. I forgot what kind of drugs I have. But can I lace my arrow with drugs so that it? That's something it does that's crafting. There is a whole system for that. So okay. during combat, it's too quick. Every round is a six seconds. Okay. So it's not enough time to do anything like that. But between combat, let's talk about it. But uh, okay. for now, you can't, unfortunately. Good, good creative right. idea. But okay. this is where I'm tightening up the rules, right? So I know I usually say yes to this kind of thing outside of combat, but here we're going to be more okay. strict. Right. Well, then um, I'm on the top, so I'll, I'll, I'm still going to try to hit. Hit number three with the with these arrows that I've got. Okay, great. Because I can see him now. And yes, I'm yeah, yeah, bo yeah. Both of these are visible. Uh, just oh, because both of them. Yeah. So it, if it's a, there's a bead on it, you can't see it. This one's wounded. Oh. And because it doesn't have a bead on it, means that you know you can see where it is. It hasn't successfully. Oh, I thought it was from. a cloud of any bushes. No, no, it just oh, did well, not successfully hide. Closer. You can either get the wound or. The yeah, so get, the side must oh, keep going. I'll go for one. Because okay, good. Anyway. Roll your d20 against that one. D20. Yeah. This one against the AC of the goblin. Yeah. Higher you roll, the better. Six, nine? Nine. Uh -huh. Dot on the right. And then, nine. yep, and then just uh, you, you say the math and people do it for you, or plus, just give me the total. Plus five. One d6. Plus five. Yeah. And I have to roll a one d6? No, 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 wait, no, so, no. So, so this so is to hit. You're rolling to hit at the moment. So you've got nine plus five to hit. Yeah. So if so, just just some people love doing math, some people don't. If you want to do the math yourself, just sort of just give me the result. That's great. If you want people to do the math for you, just say something like that. As soon as you hear a, a sum, anybody can say the total. So what was the total? So 14. 14, total okay. 14 yeah, if you want to do it yourself, then just keep the numbers mm -hmm. internally. 14 is not enough. These things are fairly okay. well, uh, they're quite dexterous. And mm -hmm. it scratches its skin, but it's got some tough sort of you know, hide on. Oh. And it does not do any damage. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, it doesn't do the job. And that was you, Gammy. You can move around, of course, as part of your action. You're up around. there on that walkway. OK. If I uh, dash, can I use an arm as a bonus? Uh, you can use an item by, you could draw, you could do what's called minor item action. What are you thinking of doing? Um, can I 
just for a tea because it's pretty fun. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, everybody will find out. I'll, I'll, I'll get it through. Um, Do you know it's nature? Well, that's the thing. Yes. I've got to work out if I can cast cure wounds as a bonus Which, action. Or a oh, I action. see. I see. I'm that would take an action. Because I'm going to shoot or I'm going to be healing. Yeah. It doesn't yeah, say and that, that'd be good. Yeah, you do an action and be sort of like, uh, like you'd be grappling it once you, once you do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that could be a lot of fun. Okay. Yeah. So grappling, you start off with it being zero and then you're able to do more. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what are you going to do? I actually know what I'm planning to do. Thanks. What is our movement? It's six, Sorry, isn't it? Uh, for a dwarf, it's five. Five for a dwarf. Okay, so I'm going to dash. I'm going to come over here and help help Sean. Okay, great. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, I can just dash. Yeah, so use your finger first. So uh, keep, keep your chip there. No, count your finger to make sure you can make it. Yeah, so dashing is double. Dashing is double. Yeah, so you can count ten squares. One, two, three, oh. four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Perfect. Yeah, so you're able to get up against it. So now, yeah, that's, that's um, good. And then that's exhausted all my moves. That has, yes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, Um. well, my bonus action, I'll just grapple it to the ground, I suppose, if that's possible. You oh, no, up. you can't use it, but you have to use an action to, to, to be Ah, okay, well, look, I'll, action, I'll, so just, up against it. I'll just chill it. I, I don't have any bonus actions to take that, I suppose. Okay, yeah, so often spells use bonus actions, but I'm not sure about those that you guys have. Yeah. I don't have, I don't have any... Yeah, do you have a bonus act? Do you have like healing word or something they can cast on the on our downed wizard or anything well, like that? Well, isn't he too far away? It doesn't yeah. matter. Uh, he would have done it before he left. That's fine. We can retro. It doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. Well, no, it does matter. No, no, no. I'll, I'll, I'll do that. I'll use healing word retroactively as a bonus if that's okay. Okay, yeah, sure. Yeah. So let's say that while you're still there, you were in range and you get a bonus action on you. Um, so Four. you've just healed for 10. Nice. Yeah, 4 one, one, plus. plus 6. Oh, really? That's yeah. great. Okay. That's awesome. So you just have to turn. Yeah, that's because you're a life cleric. That's yeah, right. That's right. Yeah. Ah. Up the turn. Cool. Thank you. So you use a die again. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I could do it either way. And then you've gone over there, so you got yourself positioned. Good job. I will never die again. You've got your work cut out for you. Can be done as a bonus? No, only an action. Yeah, it has to be a bonus action. You again. By default, it's an action. Yeah, all the spells you need don't say whether they're bonus or not. They will, if it's a bonus, it will definitely say it. So you can use the word bonus on there. So in that case, I don't need to go and cure. What's your character name again? Sorry. So I don't need to go and cure Sorry F. I am going to take Celia and have another shot at something. Now, if I use Celia two-handed, I actually have a 320-foot range. Uh, it's not two-handed. It's just that that's uh, so 80 uh, is plenty. So 80 means that you can fire regular. 16 squares. Uh, that the second number is if you fire further than 80 and less than that, you have disadvantage. Just like you're arcing the shot. It's okay. not. It's not two-handed. Okay. No. So it's just a two-handed weapon. Yeah. You got an 80-foot range. That's 16 squares. You can hit pretty much anything. Can I hit then this one that's running away all the way? Yeah, where are there. you? Right here? I'm here. You're here, yeah. You've got a line of sight to it, sure. Do I, can I get there with the six? Oh, yep. mm. because yeah, even if it is. 80. Okay, so if I get it to 16. The only problem is that you've got somebody standing in the way, so it'll have cover. It'll have a plus two to AC because you're firing through somewhere. So if I creature. was to sort of shift a step yeah, or exactly. two over yeah, yeah, and right. then shoot. Okay, let's see if I can get to 16 squares. Yeah, that's um, fine. Yeah, don't worry about it. Let's say, let's say you sidle over here. That'll give you a good enough angle. Really? Yeah. Well, let's say here, yeah, on this side of the tree. But wouldn't I have angle. that tre tree? Um, uh, let's, no, let's just grant it. That's okay. fine. It just I went for the top of that tree. Do that. No, don't worry about it. I'm sure, I'm sure you're in range. The whole map isn't, isn't 16 squares. Don't worry Are you about sure? it. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Um, okay. Go for it. Um, all right. So I need, I think my bonus is plus one to that. So okay. Well, I'm going to head out there. 13? 13 total? Here, so. uh, to hit? Yeah, 13 to hit is not enough. No, unfortunately, your crossbow uses your dexterity bonus, which isn't quite as high as some of your other stuff you're doing. Yeah. And it means that as it arcs towards it, the goblins, hears the whistle, moves a little bit out of the way, and it hits the ground next to it. Okay. Oh, um, I well, I don't think I've got any other moves or actions. All right, let's take. keep on going then to Vol. Okay, I'm going to go around the tree because everyone seems to forget that this guy is going to go up here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <in the next room. laughs> and, that, and that guy probably will as well. And the wounded guy is going to go up here. Yeah. So now let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Sure. Go, go up there okay, go. sure. Yep. Comes crashing through the bush up to this terrified goblin. Yeah. And of course, turns just in time to see you approaching with your axe. That great axe is coming out there. All right. Let's hope that this actually works. Okay. 16 Ooh. plus 5, 21. Very good. That is definitely enough. Your axe sinks into the goblin. Roll your damage okay. and hope for a good number. It might take 12. it down entirely. 
Oh, you're kidding me. Plus your strength bonus, of course, so you might uh, make it. So, plus three, so seven. Oh, good seven. thing you did that last bit of working out, because that last hit point's enough, like, ah, you chop in. Mm -hmm. It's like, it, it staggers, and then you're able to, like, with your strength, you're able to do it again and cut all the way through it. Well, the goblin is cut down. Though, right? They have yeah. seven health, that's oh, right. I think we found that out one like oh. yes. Yeah. Good, another one dead. Yeah, good job, roll. And I'm just still alive. <laughs> my turn again. <laughs> no, uh, he's going again. <laughs> This one dashes. You see his wounded form coming across. When it dashes, it can, of course, move twice as far. It has to climb up this tree, which is 20 feet. Oh, wow. Uh, but, and it moves half speed. But the way I've previously counted that from the edge of the bush, it's able to get all the way up here. If it does nothing but dash, it ends up here on the walkway, but cannot get in. So it's now at the top of the tree, pops out next to it, and is in that square. Don't Close hurt. enough to you mm -hmm. to, to take care of him. One more turn, it'll go. Yeah. It is now on the way in. It hasn't attacked. That was number one. Number two here. Okay. Uh, yeah, it just loves all these targets that are up here. So it considers you a threat. I think it will go and take a fire but at two. <laughs> What's happened? <laughs> it's back bad again. Yeah. Now the direction it's going, it's going to actually go for you based on its own plans. Uh, but it does not uh, fire with advantage on this one. There's a tree in the way, but... Uh, yeah, it'll do it on. Yes, good point. It'll do it on the way. So it goes over here. Yeah, you're right. So it uh, so it has cover. You have cover from the tree in the walkway. I'd oh, say you have cover and between those two. Like yeah, from Malika. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Yeah. So it has. From you have shield. a plus two to your AC as you go. Okay. And it's this is not with advantage. advantage. It's having to get around. With a everyone. fourteen, normally be enough to hit you, but because of the trees and all the people around you, it, it hits a tree instead. Okay. Cool. So that first shot does not hit you. It takes a second shot over at you. Same thing. With a 12, still no good. It does not hit you either way. It has gone in here and it attempts to hide. Yeah. And oh, no. It does plus succeed. 6, 14. Plus it succeeds. Successfully hidden somewhere in this bush. Mm -hmm. <coughs> All right. That was number two. Where is number three? I think it's dead. Where is number four? It is asleep. Where is number five? It's asleep. <laughs> ah, but th I'm going to move this one first. Yeah. So this one over here is going to wake this one up as its action. And as its action has done that, it's going to move to this bush over here. It's going to try to hide. Six plus six, 12, not enough. So you can see where it is, but it's not far enough. It's trying to hide in the bush. But we're going back to this one's turn. This one is going to then be fully activated. It is going to, I'm going to use these numbers because this helps me sort of realize where everyone is. So everybody, clockwise, put, put a number next to your thing, counting one, two, three, four, five, six, et cetera, all the way around here. This, this helps me distribute five, five, things around. Should that not go in our initiative order? No, um, this is the way I look around the table. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, it's just easier for me to count that's, that way. That's that's just next to your chip is fine. Putting a number on paper. Yeah, put it next to the chip, just so it doesn't cover up what they look like. One, two, three, four, high five. One, two, three, four, high five. All of the yours. Fine. <laughs> fine then. Do you want number five? No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> it's five? a six. Yep. That's six there. Six? That should be it, I think. That should be everybody. Okay, this one over here still sees you as a threat, Vol, so it's going to be taking a shot at oh, you, yeah. but this time... Uh, it was not hidden, so it has no advantage as it fires at you. He's but with the 20, I don't think it matters. You can hit anyway, Vol. That's for, 17. So. Yeah, you have an AC of 17. Yep, 20 hits you. You get surprised by an arrow from an unexpected direction as it hits your shoulder for 7 piercing damage. Cutting, oh, in, cutting an artery a bit. Oh, down to wow. one. You're down to <laughs> one. Oh. <laughs> Have you used your second wind yet? This wind Not just yet. But well, you're gonna, you might wish you have. I'm going to roll the square and square as it fires at you a second. I don't, I don't know if I can do a, do a um, second wind while the other. Not while you're unconscious, which may happen. No, 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 I'm going to no, roll this. Yeah. Well, the In between the two. In That's right. No, it has to be yeah. on your turn. Yeah. All right. So with a second shot that it takes at you, Les, you're going to hope it's not going to hit you. But with a 23, I'm afraid it does. Oh, you're kidding me. <laughs> I'm not kidding. You get hit for seven more piercing damage. Yeah, and I'm down dead. you go. All right. Where are you again? You're there. <laughs> one of the few that's on the from there. <laughs> this one moves over here and tries to hide. And with 15, it's successful. It's I hidden like somewhere in the bush. I feel like attempt to save yeah. All right. Wait, wait till he goes up. Yeah. That was number He's five. We've oh, taken care of this one, number three. Him, no, no, no. We have number two over here. So number two over here is going to try to run. Fuck trees. However, 
The good thing is that I'm going to just, I'm not going to do it uh, totally by snap squares and run out. It's going to disengage, so it's going to be able to get away from you without uh, provoking an attack of opportunity. Goblins are slippery that way. But I know that just by triangulation, there's no way it can be out of range of both of you. Um, I'm just going to say, odds, so I'm going to roll odds versus evens on which one of you is going to be able to get it next turn. Mm -hmm. It's just the way the triangulation works. Odd is even. Even is going to be you. you. So, mm -hmm. Shudian, I won't move it around, but next turn you can, if you want, run up to that goblin and still be able to attack it. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's disengaged, it's trying to run. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that was number two. <coughs> We've done number three. We have, oh, this number four over here has been hidden the whole time. And we're going to... Uh, you're, you're, just, you're just down still. So I think it's just going to go up to the most logical creature here. I think it's going to... I think it's going to go this way, but it doesn't like this sort of rumbling sound. I'm going to... Ooh, it chickens out. Is it going to wake the, the, yeah. the other guy up? It goes over this way. Uh, that's that's a good point, but but yeah. thank thank you for mentioning that. But I think I'm going to just have to, have to leave more it as it is. I know exactly. No, no, it's very good. I, I, it makes it makes it very fun. So it moves over here. Doesn't like being here. It chickens out, and it's going to keep on dashing. So instead of attacking, it's going to go from here. One, two, three. No, four, five, six. One. Yeah, come towards my <laughs> body there. Seven, eight, nine, <laughs> ten, <laughs> eleven. Ah, I can't <laughs> quite <laughs> make it to the bush. Oh. Thanks to your diversion over here, it sort of had to take a crooked path, and it does not make it to the bushes, unable oh. to hide, and Sweet. also unable to do anything else. Mm. So that was all of the goblins, I believe, and we're yeah. going to go around again with you. Sorry, yes, now freshly alive. <laughs> Put them all to sleep. I'm going to move, use my movement to get to um, here. Yep. And then I'm going to use that that wonderful devil scroll called Thunder Wave, ah. and I'm going to blast these bastards out. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so Thunder Wave, it originates a cube that has to be adjacent to you. You're 20 feet up, so you'd have to get down there. Can I get down there? You could, but you have to climb. Let's see. So you're here. This is why we should probably yeah. count off the fingers. Yeah, One, two, enough. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you'd have a hard time getting down there unless you jump. Jumping. <laughs> now he's got ten health. Six <laughs> what I'll do is is sort of I'll let you sort of hang down there, and so I'll, I'll uh, you'll take only a little bit of falling damage as you go. Roll and roll a, uh, an acrobatics check to see if you can sort of manage to do this. You're going to try to grab onto a tree branch on the way down. Thanks. Ten. Ten. That's good. This, uh, trees are easy to grab onto, yeah. so DC ten is, is fine for sort of ordinary things. So you jump down here, you grab onto a tree branch that's up high. Very nice acrobatics. Just maybe do a little spin as it goes. Is that <laughs> Elven heritage? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and yeah. and then as you as you drop down, you take two points of damage as you land with a thud. However, you move over into place. You as you're doing this, you're pulling out that scroll that you got from your devil deal. Yep. And it's time for thunder wave. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh, nice. Yes, I love that. Like Thunderdome, break, Thunder break, Wave. Break like, like, yeah. I just want the what a move. To the lyrics. <laughs> what a move. That was metal. All right. So Thunder Wave, it creates a 15-foot cube originating from you. Thanks to your jump, you've been able to create that cube as sort of like a 3x3 three three square, and you get to pick it. Um, now, I'd say, oh, you want to get all three of these, don't I'm you? I'm getting all three of these. Yeah, that's right. You know it's here, so you're going to actually gonna stop here. And you're gonna choose this as your three by three cube. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> so they all do a uh, Constitution save. Now the DC when you use a spell, let's just use your let's just use your spell uh, DC. What, what's what's your save DC on the back of your sheet? This is what they have to roll in order to be unaffected. Uh, spell save thirteen. Okay, thirteen. But, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna do sure, Constitution sure saving because throws I'm level here. Three. I'm not sure if it goes up because I'm level. Uh, four. No, it doesn't. But when at level four, okay. your stats go up, and that's okay. that. Level thir mm -hmm. thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. So with the Constitution bonus, I'm gonna roll. Start with this, just clockwise. This one over here. Oh, it saves, but it takes half damage. Not to worry. You'll still damage it some. This one over here. Oh, my goodness. Very lucky save. It take only half damage. This one over here. No, this one fails. Now, roll your damage. If the same damage applies to all targets in the area. What It'll be I halved for the yellow ones. What you I roll 2d8. Okay. Which one's a d8? The double pyramid. Uh, the, yeah, that one. Yeah, our two pyramids butt to butt. Oh, shit. Yeah, gotcha. Ooh. Good. Yeah, another. Roll 2d8s. Thank you. Two, four. Is sorry. that a D8 or a D10? No, that's a D10. That's oh, a D10. D10. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I should have gone red. red. Well, the, the two that you rolled still... still oh, no, one was a D8. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, so you, you already rolled 1d8. Yeah, so, so the 1d8 was already down there. So the yeah. 2 is okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, you have to keep the 2. <laughs> Sorry. This, this one you can re-roll. Oh, two. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, four points of damage. This one takes four points of damage, is wounded, but it gets knocked back ten feet. Whoa. Boom! Straight away from you. Oh, These two really each take two points of damage, half of that, but they are revealed, for, first of all, as they take damage and get wounded. So they're no longer hiding, because you just sort of see, you, know, you see like There's they're, no they're, 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 yeah, the camouflage flies off. <laughs> Luckily, it's only thunder damage, all the elves are like, <gasps> all the you know, and then like all the, all the, the bush bends back, but ah, Wasn't there back, a, all the elves are like, ah, they're really the side effect damage of the like the, um, the side effect was any loose on, on like um, rocks or stuff. Just go, <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, so you reveal them by, by doing the thunder wave. So good job, okay. and you've wounded them all, which means it's a little more damage to take them down, but they're still alive. <laughs> uh, we've already counted for that. Maybe that's Damn, part of what the life and the life. That was a good investment. It was a good investment. Three targets, and that was sorry. Life, my soul. Yep. All right, next you go. Um, attack you. Yeah. This one here, attack it out. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so what, you're chasing it through the woods, and yes. while we doesn't, you're close enough. You catch up to it, and you'll swing at it. Give it a good old whack. So, we're no longer looking yeah. at the map. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and do it yeah. as is. Hopefully, you'll get it. Oh, oh ah, yes. yes. Oh. Yep. Go ahead and okay. roll your damage on that one, because that's a hit. Uh, I know the 15 plus whatever you got is going to be higher than say AC. I was rolling that again? Or? Yep. yep. Yeah, when, and when it comes to your turn, try to have your damage die in hand. Try to be ready for all these things. That's another d20. Okay. So you just want to roll your damage die. Yeah, next to your axe. You six, was it? Yeah. Uh, it was uh, yeah. No, it's not a javelin. Yeah, you actually ran up to it with your axe. Uh, no, no, you ran up. So it's, you want your d12. d12. Yeah, d12. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, the... Whoa, 12 points of damage. You kill this thing. Remove it. Good job. It could have survived, but it didn't. That machinery is saved. Very nice. All right. We might just lose some more of this. Yeah, exactly. Whether is it? Yeah, exactly. We'll assume that you're able to grab it up as a as an item interaction. Because it's a small creature. You're a medium creature. You're now holding on to the machinery. Don't bother writing it down because the elves will want it back. I guess soon. You can steal it if you want. Do you want to tell the elves that it was taken and just pocket it? Or are you going to give it back? Fuck elves. Save this guy. I don't even know what it does. Here. Yeah, so, if you, so if you're, so you don't have to write it down. I'll hold it for you. We'll see if you're getting it back. Yeah, hold it for me. Okay, great. That was your turn. Mm -hmm. You're a little bit distance away, so if you come running back to the action, we'll have to account for that. Yeah. All right, next is you, Gammy. Uh, well, and he's there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm here, so. Yeah, that's right. This one is about to run in is, and rabbit um, smells. How are you? You know, this one's not going to shoot at you, so now it's a choice. Like, do you let this one go and take yeah. out some of the other threatening enemies, or do you shoot this one and prevent it from running back to a treehouse? It's one of those tactical decisions that only you if can I don't, decide. Only if I don't try to attack him, he'll keep going into, he the, will. into the... That into he the, will. Into the room with all the machines. That that's know. right. So he's going to kill so elves burning, and steal things. So. That, that not but not kill yeah. you. <laughs> no, but... Elves and I'm halfling, so we're friends. Ah, I like that. Right. Okay, that so burning with world, so. desire to protect your elven mm -hmm. brethren, you can yeah. fire. Plus, um, he's also damaged it anyway, so you can yeah. just yeah. So decide now. Yeah, so I have a short sword. Okay. So you know what? Yeah. Because you're up on this walkway and because these are distracted, mm -hmm. I'll let you get advantage by doing a successful hide beforehand. Okay. So roll your d20 to see if you can hide because you've got some, you've got cover. Because you're a little, you're a halfling. You're able to sort of hide behind there. And, Plus, and I don't know. Stealth is on your list there. Stealth. That's yeah. Yeah. Where's stealth? Oh, seven, down there. Plus seven. Plus seven. Yeah. So that's um, um, a near double. Um, Fifteen. Yeah. As soon as anybody hears our sum, you go ahead and say the total if you want to, because that that's, that will get help it help along. With Fifteen. That's good. Mm -hmm. The goblin does not know you're coming as you creep around this with your bow. You're gonna have to fire with advantage. Take your two d twenties. Roll both d20s at the same oh. time. The green one and the yellow one, for example, or whatever yep. you got. Yep. yep. Yeah, that's right. No, d yeah, don't roll the gray one, because that's a, that's a d12. That's a d12. Yep. Yeah, just the yellow one, that, that marbly one. one. You don't need this one. Let's keep that one. Oh, away. I don't need that one. Oh, yeah, yeah that's a d12. One. You won't ever need that one. Wow. Okay. Four, eight. Okay, so take the eight. Well, add add what your bonus is. What your bonus oh, to wait, shoot wait, with. Just eight. Yeah. That's fine. I don't know, five, so that's um, 13. 13, oh, not enough. So despite your not advantage, enough. it hears the creak at the last second, it ducks, and the arrow flies over its head and is still alive. That was your turn. You can move if you like. Uh, however, you really won't be able to block it. The only other thing you can do, you know it's probably going to run this way. You can heroically jump uh, oh, over yeah. here. 
Okay, yeah, I'll do that. It's part of your move action. Halfling, so yeah. that, have that it. is 10 Six feet. Your strength yeah. probably isn't high enough to do it. So let's let's get can now you do an athletics. Up? What? Can can you, follow? Uh, <laughs> you can follow, but yes, it's going to move very fast. So okay. once it goes back, it'll be lost in sort of this okay. maze of rooms. Okay. And okay. also, they can disengage. They can hide really easily. You have to get it while it's still on the map. Otherwise, it's going to rule mm -hmm. that, that it's going to evade you. This is your last chance to get it. But you can jump this gap. You're only 20 feet up, you know? If you fall, that'll be a problem. Maybe you'll end up hanging by one hand. Who knows? But it'll be a fairly easy athletics check and get in the way of this goblin. Don't have to slide back out this way again with the machine. Eventually, but you know, they're going to burn. They, the they, there's so many different directions that they can go. We'll have to get to that part later on. I have mine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a huge village. They can scamper out. So athletics would be based on your strength. It'd be listed there. There's also minus one. Okay. All right. You're not the best at it. So. Your choice is to let it go, and maybe somebody else will take it out, or it can try to make this heroic jump and get in its way so it can't it's get back athletics. very easily. Could it not be acrobatic? So rather than just a jump, not really. like a yeah, somersault so flip? Anytime you're moving through space, you know, skillfully, mm -hmm. it's always athletics. Yeah. So, that's interesting. That, that, that stuns me, because acrobatics, mm -hmm. I'm thinking, like, it's a very old I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. If there were a trapeze and I'd do a flip, that would be acrobatics. So this is, this is an old debate, I'm afraid. We don't know if there's a trapeze. It's always acrobatics. Yeah. 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 Like, jumping through the air like that, to me, would be more... So that you should, there should be some loose, some branch. Oh, okay, right. now that's a good point. Yeah, you, this, you're on, this is a tree. There's branch. Yeah. Okay, all right, fine. Because you use the acrobatics <laughs> to grab onto a tree branch. Let's do the same thing here. Use your acrobatics. Good job. That's not always true. It's because you're swinging from a vine, okay? Good. Do an acrobatics. Good point. That's great. Makes a good story. Okay, so, so roll, roll a d20 roll. and add your acrobatics bonus. This is quite easy to do. 18. Oh, yes. Yeah. You look amazing. Yeah. As you swing through and land here, blocking his way. So it's just like putting his head yeah. down, you know, because yeah, it doesn't really go stop. He was oh, moving, yes. you okay. fire, you miss, mm -hmm. you swing, and then you plant yourself in the way with your weapons up, and ah! you know, he's, he's mm -hmm. stopped, wounded, bleeding. He has stopped his progress. Good job, Gammy. Okay. Cool. All right, what are you going to okay. do? Um, how far is 120 feet on this map? Oh, ev everything. Everything? Cool. Yeah, All right, squares. so I am going to try and kill this dude. <laughs> okay. Guarding Bolt. Ah, pulling out the big guns. Yeah. All right, one of your spell slots for Guiding Bolt. Go for it. Um, was it 15? 15 is enough. Is Good enough. job. That's yes. Okay. So 15 hits it, and that uh, does a lot. I love this spell. Yeah. I guess 15 is. I get to, I get to roll is. so yeah. many die for this. So now you know it's 18. I, lo I, love, I love the fact <laughs> that we discovered Guiding <laughs> Bolt does yeah. that. Yeah. And it's going to be one of the spells I'll be sad to give up if I change uh, a light grade. Level 2. Just look at his Yeah, so you finally got it right. Nice. Go for it. Woo! Oh, uh, that's a lot. Cock die, gotta roll that one again. Yeah. That's why these dice tray come in handy. I'll move these out. All right. What's that? Read that? 11, so 13. Okay, 13 points of damage. It blows apart into pieces. Uh, <laughs> all right. Thanks, pieces he of goblin fly. <laughs> yes, yes. He man blesses you as your guiding bolt awesome. sings true. Good job. And of course, marking off your, your precious spell songs you've been very wise to hold on to all this time. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Smart. Okay, so which... Can I make a move as well, sorry? Yes. Just really quick. Yeah. Um, one, two, three, four, five. All right, running back to the fray. Good job. All right, so we've got... This one is... Sleep. 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 These two are wounded. That one's wounded, wounded yeah. and running. Yeah. And then we've got this one that's wounded that's right. here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I've got someone here that I need to heal. I keep yes. saying, don't no. worry. He's on the ground. He needs um, to get out. But because I can do that from a distance, I don't need to jump down. I can, from here, do the healing word. It's one of the you only can. bonus spells I have. There you go. I got confused. Wrong. Okay, so I need to also take an action and or movement. Um, you got to keep it moving. Try I'm to have sorry, your plan moved out. I, That's okay. That's just, that's, in I, that case, <laughs> I won't do it, take an action. I'll just do healing word and move on. If you, if you can move as a bonus, you can do a... If you've got two spell slots, you I, can attack someone. I can't someone think fast then. enough for us oh, to no, move no, on. I didn't mean so, to rush. I'm very sorry. Um, no, no, let's, I will let's just rewind. do the no. healing word no. and, and we'll rewind. move on. Um, I so, think you still you still fire also yeah, here. Yeah, but I need to think and if you want to move on, let's move on. Oh, no, no, sorry. I rushed you too much. You Let's could also see. use your action to do what's called dodge. It makes everything trying to fire at you have a disadvantage. It would be very good if anything's shooting at you. Um, could also, be okay. that so sooner. I roll <laughs> plus my spell attack bonus for healing. No, to heal. Second, so. <laughs> yeah, for healing? For healing. Do I just it roll? It is healing word, which I'll look up here. 
Uh, you would roll a, a number, which it would be defined in the spell itself, but I'll look it up. Okay. I'll look it up here. Healing word, unless somebody knows it already. So I'll... It's a 1d4 plus 6. Okay, so great. I don't need to roll anything for, like, attack. It's just no, it roll always works. the heal. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so d4 plus 6, 3, six, 9. Very good. So for nine. All right. Okay. Up you go. I suggest if, if you don't know what else to do with your actions, applies to everyone, you always have the option to do dodge. It requires your actions, but dodge means they have disadvantage to shoot you. I've only got one spell slot left, because that was one of them. That's plenty. No. Mm. <laughs> so look, there's, mm, if we've got more coming through, we, I'll hold on do, to it now, because I don't know when our rest will be. <laughs> okay, yep, that, that could be a very good call. All right, good job, Shmarag. Uh, do you want to move anywhere? No, I'll stay where I am. All right, Vol. Okay. Uh, now, let's see. I'll are you still to... unconscious? No, because I just got healed. Oh, of course. Oh, yes. Mm. Thank you for that. Um, now, <clears throat> because we because we know that thaumaturgy is going on, that yep. we're not affected by it. Is that no, right? no, exactly. You know it's harmless. Okay. Because I'm thinking I'll come over here using a dash, because I don't think I've got enough uh, space to do that. One, two, three, four. Ah, one, two, three, four, five, six. Not quite enough. No. Because I want to get in between these guys, mm -hmm. and if I can, I'll use my second wind to increase the health points. Because I know that these guys will almost kill me again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but can I do that after a, a dash? Do what the uh, bonus second wind? Second wind is yeah, it's a bonus action. Yes, yes after you dash. Yep. All right. So I will do that. Coming in here. Good. Yes. Yeah, so now you're in their way. Yep. Okay. Yep. And using a second 1d10, which I forgot to take out, well, I will do a uh, use my second wind to increase my health points further because I do not trust those guys from before. <laughs> <laughs> All right, keeping me alive. Hey. Yeah. Yep. Uh, plus my fighter level, which is two, so I get ten. So hey, I'm, good. I'm Self healing. Max hit points now. Awesome. And imagine if I hadn't healed you. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's true, that's true. I was hoping that you would protect this guy. <laughs> well, hey. He jumped out of my way. I can't reach him in time. I only got little legs. I I We're going to keep moving. Cool, but, um, oh. All right. And okay, good job, all. My, my athletics is terrible. <laughs> Fair enough. I get it. Okay, <laughs> this one over cool. here, we're back to the goblins, yeah? Mm -hmm. This one wants to get cool. past you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It considers going this way, but because I don't like using that part of the map, it's still going to try to take you on. Okay. It thinks that it, so it, it just utters a goblin a curse at you as it pulls out its scimitar. It's going to uh, be one of those, you know, you both dashing. It's had its bow this whole time, so it throws his little goblin bow down to the ground because it has to draw a scimitar, so at least he got to okay. give up his little goblin bow. Mm. And he comes yes. running up towards you with a scimitar. Ah! And just tries to attack you. He wants to take you down so he can run over just your dead body. With a 23, oh. mm -hmm. that is enough oh. to hit you. Mm. It slashes you for six. Oh no. Well, man, you have to only have only five. <gasps> oh, heroic. A heroic, a heroic fail. A heroic uh, fall, I mean. Oh, down mm. you go. Gammy is going to be doing death saving throws. Okay. It's. Runs over you oh, no. into, the, into the rest of it. Ah, oh, that's the way the dice have the gone. Elves, they have the means to sort of slightly protect themselves as well, right? No, yeah. they're no. civilians. They yeah. suck. Did, did, did they have? Didn't they have fighters at one point? Uh, just yes, like but yeah, you know, just just the way the mechanics of this fight works, that uh, things getting through is just gonna is just gonna cause some amount of steel and elf death. It's just the way it goes. Oh mm. uh, well, they've lived a long life anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's only <laughs> one. Keep on going. <laughs> Good else. job, Gammy. Now somebody needs to get Gammy back up. Otherwise, we'll be doing death saving throws over here, and we don't want that. Gammy, you're not dead. You're unconscious mm -hmm. for right now. Okay. Luckily, you know, because you're small, you grabbed onto this little narrow walkway. So but I was unconscious. <laughs> well, you know, as to your final thing, you hold <laughs> okay. on and curl up. Hmm. All right, that was number one. What a great start. Number two they can disengage as a free action, which means that I can run right past this little blockade, but it's going to stay away from all this. So one, two, three. Now climbing up is four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Yes, so that's enough to get over mm, either side. I think it's going to have to move here because it's greedy. This one is going to try to do the same thing. One, two, three, four, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. 12. It has to move here because it can't occupy this, so it has to go up there. So they both scampered up the tree. That is number two and five, which did out of turn. Number four is still asleep, but we're getting pretty thin. Number three over here is determined. It runs in here and tries to hide. It's in the tree. 
Uh, it's going to try. With a 15, it hides successfully. Ah, it cannot hide successfully because you were in the bush with it. That uh, uh, I've, I've hopefully <laughs> applying this consistently. That if you're inside the bush, it cannot hide. So Isn't wounded that as it is, bush, like all tr- leafless after thunder wave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the elves were relieved that it did not damage the bush. That was very. They're very grateful for it, that. It just burned the top of the tree a bit. So this one's getting ready to run up the tree, but cannot do it. It goes there, it's tried to hide, and was <laughs> unable right. to. Yeah. Uh, it can also attack yeah. because it's still got an action. Like it's like I it's think. Air. It takes a shot at, let's see, um, I think we have a tank right here. I think we're going to take a shot at the tank. <coughs> Number five, which one is you? It's you! Oh, you've got plenty of hit points. Yes. Brave you. This is why I had to do that. Part. So unhidden, it takes a shot with a 10. Uh, you step aside from that. It's second yep, shot. Is a 12. Ah, it hits your armor and you are unaffected by it. That was his turn, turn, turn. Still asleep. And that's that round. Let's go around, hopefully, one more round before these things scamper all away. What you gotta do? Um, climb up to where these guys are. Ah, all right. Yep, you were able to do the same thing that they can. Now you have to dash in order to do it, right? So just yep. like they did, you won't be able to take an action. As you get up there, you're now you're clinging to the tree because the walkway on, on either side. So you're up there, you're you're a little bit disadvantaged. You're still holding onto the tree. You, you can rewind that, but because you have no space to land. Okay, so I can't use any of my spells if I get up there. Uh, I'd say you could, but you can't use your actions. The problem because you have to dash in order to get from here to there. Because moving up the tree twenty feet, okay. that itself is. Can I look up the? Can I be on the ground and look up at the tree where they yes, are? Yes, you can. Uh huh. Then I'm gonna sleep spell them up there. Ah, all right. Yes, you pick a point like you sort of fix yeah. a, a tree branch so it affects them and not you. Yeah. It's way up above you yeah. now. Let's see if they fall. Sleep spell. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's, cool. that's, that's good. Yeah. Maybe the sleep spell. I mean, they're both wounded, so they're already weakened. Oh, that's a good idea. Wow, I'm crossing off your last sleep spell. What a choice. Going to Normally, I would say roll all of your sleep damage as it is, but these things are so weak right. that just imagine this is so great. As it is, just this radiant magic you know, fills it up, and you see them like, oh, like no, you know, and like, like he, the, the two goblins, you know, uh, she's like, ah, no, must stay awake. And the other one's like you know, saying this in Goblin, he's, he's trying to hold on. They don't. They both sort of like look at each other, and both their eyes close, and they wow. fall. They fall down off of 20 the feet. Platform. 20 feet, and they're dead! Yes! Wow. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Whew. Okay. Nearly done, but uh, that was your turn. Good job using that last spell. What are you going to do? I would like to make a dash into the remaining action. Okay, um, yes. Running off from your previous errand, in you yeah. go. <laughs> I'm so, not going to do anything about that one that's asleep. I'm just going <laughs> to have <laughs> <some> <laughs> interrogate you. Because this one didn't run, let's just say that just move yourself like four more that squares one. in that's if, right. if you're dashing. Right. But you've been that's attacking right. as well. Yeah. So let's yeah. say you catch up to him right there. Because if you're doing nothing but run, yeah. you can just run to there. Let's just call it that. Uh, okay. Okay. You're running back from having gotten the machinery. Mm. Um, did you want to maybe pick up the machinery on the way back? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You yeah. scoop up the other machinery there. Okay, now we have a death saving. Nobody has gotten Cammy back up. Yeah, (laughs) okay. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Cammy. I was going to say that, you know, what you did was worth. Yeah. You knocked out two two of them at once, so. All right. Uh, Hmm. Okay, yes, Cammy. Go ahead and do a. You you do it. You have to do a death saving throw. How do I do that? It is a d20 with nothing added, it's just pure luck. Okay. Eight. An eight. That is a failure. So one of three well, failures. Once good. you commit three yeah, failures, Gammy is oh, dead, eight. dead. Failure. Yeah, so you go check that off. That was Gammy. Um, hmm? I can't really do yeah. anything, so I'm just going to start hustling over to this fella here that's asleep. Mm. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, that's a choice. Six, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, that'll do. All right, so you're running over. You, you had to use your dash to get there, and it's uh, you're in the way. Yep. Uh, your bonus can't be used for anything, I guess, so... No, I don't have anything else to do. All so right, I'm done you are. All right. All right, well, I'll now have a go healing Gammy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hang on. Um, yeah, because you, you guys are down here. here. I'm Up just here. here. Oh, yeah. Um, so, Fantastic. do I want to go at a distance with healing word or close with cure yeah, wounds? Yeah, you can just make it thanks to your Does position. One, two, three, four, wounds, five. Yep, you can make it Cure wounds them. gives more hit points. More, so I'm uh-huh. actually going to move towards you. Okay. Um, was it five, five squares I can... F- oh, five squares. One, yeah, you'll have to reach three, across. Four, four. 
Yeah, what? you're fine. No, there. That's fine. Yeah, you're adjacent. Um, oh, good. And then just stretching yourself across. Sure. Just able to reach his ankle. <laughs> um, and it's 1d8. No, one. yeah, 1d8 plus 6. Nice. Mm. Eleven. Okay. You have now been given eleven, 11. hit points. Yeah, so you're back um, into eleven out of fifteen. Woo! So your deity shines down and brings Gammy back. Oh, thanks. Cool. It's nice. That is all my Okay. All right. That's fine. Keeping friends alive. Cool. Oh, okay. Before my action, I do do want to ask everyone: Can we just surround this guy before we wake him up? Yes. Thank you. That'd be sensible. <laughs> Kill the guy that's next to you. Oh, no, no, that's what, I, that's what I'm going to do. But after that, can we just, yeah. Unless no. someone's going to bring in more goblins. <laughs> Who knows? You have to find out, won't you? I was going to say, there were five lined up. Well, <laughs> well, 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 at, well, at least, at least we're closer out. to the... Um, just raise a point. Isn't there a goblin still in the village somewhere? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But have we not just we lost him? Thing. Like, we're not going to get be able to get him back? Well, I have some he ideas. He has to come out at some point. We'll have to find out. We'll do a bonus roll. We'll see if we get it. Okay. Well, I'm just going to move one square, because... He's yes. covered. That's, That's right. right. And we're going to roll. Over, yeah. Urban warfare. And hopefully, I'm not going to blow this one. And I oh, oh, no. <laughs> Why you did you rear back, you're actually the face. <laughs> you're you're just, it, man. just tangled up in the branches and you're unable to do it. <laughs> just, your axe is sort of stuck for a while. <laughs> I think you should just buy your dice, mate. <laughs> this is. This is diabolical. Yellows work better. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll use this one next. It's a 50 50. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's the goblin's turn. We have only one goblin left here. That's weak. Oh man, that's weak. It's simply, it's just not going to make it. It's this goblin, so I'll, 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 I'll paint a scenario. This goblin surrenders, first of all. Like this one just knows, like it's just, it, it, uh, he, he just sinks to his knees and puts his hand, throws down his scimitar and puts his hands up. So it's, uh, this, this goblin surrenders. There's no way he's gonna survive and he knows it. However, this one over here that's asleep, it'll take, you know, have to do another round. But at the moment this happens, you hear screaming, and you see smoke rising from inside the village. Uh, you know that at least one has gotten through. For all you know, there's other goblins that might have come from other directions because it says it's all a 360 degree fight. You're being called, they're being called back as it is right now. Like, you, like please come back and you know, come save us. There's goblins in here. And they say plural. Mm. You're being called to run into the treehouse as fast as possible and perhaps leave the sleeping one behind. It'll just take you another few, uh, it'll take you more time to take care of this one. Do you leave it behind and therefore get in assembled a little bit later than you all would? You want to keep the party together? Or do you leave this one on the field and get inside the, 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 the house, the tree house? I stuff him in my sack. Yes! Is that you standing there? Yes. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Oh. How much air is in the sack? <laughs> Ten minutes. <laughs> oh, God, he's going to suffocate in the sack. Oh, oh it's beautiful. beautiful. Oh, that's that's pretty pretty good. Good. It's good. One, one of the last adventures we got, I got a bag of holding, which basically <laughs> it's like a Mary Poppins bag, yeah. and just like shit can just go it's in. It's got hammer space. Didn't you put it's dropped up at the bag? No, no. no. I've only got ten minutes. So dropped up back at the. No, so I'm not there. Back at the end. It's got ten minutes worth of air in the bag. Okay. Yeah. I'd say you stuff the goblin in the bag uh, very successfully. I just, just we have to use that <laughs> that moment as it is. In my by, by in no, no, it takes a, they're, they're nice. pretty asleep. Yeah, you sort of, you sort of gently nudge, uh, nudge her in. You sort of like you sort of slip it, you know, over like, <laughs> like and tie it up like, like a bean burrito. Yeah, exactly. Like, keep like the head sticking out, so it's, it's still under the sleeping bag. Oh yeah, yes, I do. I do do that. I keep the head sticking out, just like tighten it down around the shoulders. It's, the, it's still full. Uh, weighs, All right, fine. It's, it's in it, the it doesn't. Sack. It doesn't. It weighs it down like a, like a goblin head now plus the bags. Like it it's becomes a, it's nearly weightless sack. when you throw it in. The sack. I actually don't care if it's. Yeah, you something. try that. It's like yeah, nah, you sort of yeah. pop it in well, tied up now. It becomes does basically it roll, weightless. Okay. The bag. And also, you can sling it over your back, and I can climb up a tree. Can I just tie this guy up? Because I've got rope. That takes more time. This is because the magic item. I just I just had to do that. This one here, but this one no is is confessed. So other elves will come down and sort of like keep it at at knife point. So this one is captured. Don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay good job. The into the sleeping <laughs> one in the bag. Doesn't it sleeping use up less air? <laughs> well, sure, we'll give it a twelve minutes. <laughs> 10 <out of> 10. <laughs> All right, very no, good. No, no. Oh, We've got the machinery yeah. back. One to say, if, if it dies in the bag, will it rot? In the bag? Let's move on to the, the next scene because I want to pull it out before they another surprise. Here we go. I think it's a, it's only yeah. space and time. Your own fresh okay, so it's a pocket dimension. Take your take all your chips back because I'll be flipping the thing there. 
So you realize you have to run in there ASAP. Uh, yes. Thankfully, yeah. you're able to scoop up that One. sleeping goblin. Good job. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so it, as fast as you can, you get in. We're going to fast forward a little bit. You work your way up the trees. You work through, and the smoke of the fire has been spreading quite a bit. And a lot of the elves are trying to put out fire. You see that there are some elves who have, have been stabbed. Uh, you see that there are some workshops that have obviously been looted. Uh, and you're told that uh, the people have been fleeing towards the central location of the treehouse. They've taken up their machines. So not all the machines have been looted. Some have been scooped up by their, their owners, and they've moved to a central location, fleeing from what you uh, deduce must be a few other goblins who have gotten in. And uh, the f fires are creating smoke everywhere, so it's a very chaotic scene as you go through. Uh, the, as, as some villagers, you actually save them, like you seize the shadows of goblins up ahead, but when they hear you coming, the goblins leave without doing any more uh, evil deeds. So just your very presence here is now saving a lot of these villagers, thanks to your fast action. By the time you make it to the middle, we see the following. Ooh, foot map. Fancy. Oh, you already nice. <coughs> Yeah. Cool. All right. Mm. Is this open or is that just closed off? Uh, that should be closed off as it is. It's just like nice feast stuff. No, no, there's there's one there's one more. There's no safety well. rope. <laughs> so it's a round belt. Okay. <laughs> it's <laughs> camera. <laughs> <laughs> that, all right. Okay. Next scene. So, uh, there's going to be at least one goblin that's been carried over that has been in there, got in, has been doing some looting and some other stuff as it goes. That's that, uh, that, that one you'll see again in this next scene. Uh, the others, uh, when you come over, are uh, you'll see they're covered with very heavy mud and very heavy, heavy camouflage. These goblins, you figure out later on, they've gone into the village from sort of these alternate routes, but they have not been looting and killing on the way. It took them so long because you know, they knew they couldn't come the main way. They had to go all the way around. So as a result of your heroic stand, they haven't stolen or killed anybody yet. Mm -hmm. They've just recently got in. They're still sort of wet and sort of clutched with mud. So good job there. Even though we have some new goblins on the scene, your heroics have stopped them from doing anything too damaging. It's just that one goblin got through that did some of the damage there. Uh, and... Uh, so you know there's a few goblins, that, that, and you hear about others that are coming. So when they show up, you'll see the muddy ones. You hear there's a few goblins coming, and you have a choice. Here in the central platform is where a lot of the elves in the village have all retreated to be in the central area. This is like a big central meeting area. There's a big, thick tree in the middle, one of the most beautiful trees. And this platform is around it. There's a bit of a ring around where this platform doesn't touch the bark of the tree. You know, they want to make sure to give the tree room to grow and all that. You see, it's a good 20 feet down. There's a bunch of ferns and stuff down there. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful scene. A lot of elves are gathered around here. These are the villagers. And each of them is holding on to some sort of bit of machinery, some precious stuff. Again, they're artisans. So they have, you know, things that are like bow stringers, things that are like weaves and looms. All the stuff that you know is going to have levers and tubes and wires and all the stuff that the, that the goblins are going after. They're terrified. They're not fighters, but they're all gathered around. Some of them are wounded. It looks like at least one or two of them are very badly wounded and possibly dying from the, from the fire and from being attacked by, uh, by, the, by the goblin that came through. And they're all here as you arrive. There's a big ring of smoke around this, these four walkways leading in from different directions of the village. So you can't really see past the end of these walkways uh, as you just gather and take in this scene. Sorry, so is the smoke here? Or the smoke is sort of there, yeah, where the ink leaves off. Yeah, the smoke is on the outside because it's now open air and the smoke is sort of pouring out of various homes and things. So they are here with that machinery. Uh, these walkways, as you can see, are about 10 feet wide. And in the next few seconds, you hear voices from a few different directions. You hear the voice of the goblin that got through, the killer of Gammy. Very, very, he's going to be very surprised to see that you're actually still alive. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he says, I am the one who killed the halfling! He says in halfling. Then he turns around. He says, we are just here to take the machines. Stay out of the way and we won't shoot you. So the goblins are basically proposing that if you let them take the machinery, they're going to not shoot you. Can you believe goblins? And what's going to happen is going to be based on you. They're, they can come from any direction. Uh, and where you stand is basically a moral or a tactical choice that you're making. If you block the way, so if you know if they come down the walkway, if you're in a line between the walkway and where all the machinery and the elves are, in this couple seconds they have to decide, they say they're going to shoot you. But you think you might be preventing them from doing that evil deed. They say they, just, they say they just want to take the machines. If you stand out of the way, like off to the side, it means that you, you don't want to be shot. Uh, but you still want to be on the scene in case there's any way that you can help. 
as the next little bit in full unfolds. Mm -hmm. So each of you, make a decision about where you're going to stand, get in a position based on that. And you're kind of betting on which walk, you don't know which walkways are going to come down. Ooh, boy, okay. <laughs> Put yourself exactly in a square, by the way, because we are still yeah. in a square by square. Center yourself in a square. I'm back in the walkway. <laughs> wow, okay. Like okay, another okay. wall? That's a walkway, so you're actually they're coming from that direction, oh, as far yeah. as you can tell. Yeah. <laughs> then up here. <laughs> okay, so you do yeah. want to stand in the way, you just want to be back away. Very so nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, I that's agree. good. Yeah. yeah, thank you for that. Wow, okay, uh, each of you are choosing to stay in the way. Can, can oh, I just I ask that one of the goblins does not have a bow? The, yes, the one that the one that uh, stabbed. Gary. Very good point. Of course, yes, okay. yeah. he had to throw the bow down. Very clever. Yeah, did, okay, yeah. so no, so we'll we'll just send Gammy out after him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got eleven. Oh, yeah. 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 That's yeah. wonderful. Okay, Revenge. so I forget what number that goblin was. Do you remember? It was was a brown one? I, I, I can't remember. It, it was one of the yellow ones, I think. Let's let's like, make him a star. I think yes. It was one. <laughs> All right. So there's one coming there. Yes, revenge now. <laughs> mm. Okay. You're a yeah. vengeful person, are you, there, Gavin? <laughs> well, no, but... <laughs> okay. Get him. And these three are covered Surprise. with the mud that is coming in. I'm going, they're going to, they come from random directions as they go, and they have got the drop on you. <clears throat> let's start with... Oh, let's, let's leave the star for the last. So those got the other guy uh, from the direction. The other Different side directions. of the building. So roll for the what direction they and come from. That's from, right. They came from the outside. Direction. Okay, this one, and that, that direction is one. We'll go clockwise from there. Comes from direction number one. This one comes from here. It is in the smoke as it fires. Who's the brown axe? Me. Okay. With advantage, it's going to fire from the smoke as it runs towards you, revealing itself. The smoke's in its eyes. Mm. Yeah, it's been, it's been creeping up. It's been using what we call like a passive hide, which is higher than your perception, so it's able to fire once undetected with advantage against our target. Does smoke affect dark vision? Uh, it or does. Dark vision yeah, see you can't, smoke? Yeah, you can't see through it. Yeah, okay. yeah, it obscures, unfortunately. So it's definitely light level, not just... Yeah, it's um, just light level, yeah. It's like, infrared, it's like you see infrared. Uh -huh, it's about to lift light being stopped by your dark vision, you're With a 23 us. against Fogrim! <laughs> Yay! Fogrim, you take three piercing damage. Oh, equals. It takes a second shot against you, Fogram. Oh, With a six, you uh, goes far short. Having used this action, is it, it's probably disengaged, but it as it runs, it is unable to get very far. It is able to come close to you, but it cannot make it to the Elven Machines. By forcing mm. it to shoot, by standing its way, it cannot get its prize. Now we see how the other one goes. Number two comes from direction number two, coming from over there. That's right. Yeah, yeah. It's very convenient. Yeah, don't worry about it because it'll be moving yeah. soon. Mm -hmm. Same deal. It has, has been hiding. Your perception isn't high enough to see that as it fires with advantage <coughs> against what is it, Yushudian? Against Yushudian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My uh, 17. <gasps> what, what, oh, yeah. With a 24, yeah, it does a critical oh. hit. It Jesus rolled a 20. Yushudian, this comes out of nowhere and hits you for 11 points oh, of damage. Okay. And he's up. Still up? I'm a good. I'm hey, Shudia's sure. still up. Oh, this thing gets you in the neck. Yeah. You get an arrow in the neck. Oh, of all places. There's a second <laughs> arrow coming at you, though, okay. because it gets to fire twice. But with the 10, I think you probably double over, you know, clutching at this thing. And the next arrow sails over your head. Okay. And you just hear in the distance. It does the same thing. So give me that chip again. So it try it runs past you. It's taken disengage, so you don't get an attack. But it isn't able to reach its target, because you made it shoot. Mm. The third one. Oh, with a three. Of How course. convenient. <laughs> and the fourth <laughs> one. Let's see. <laughs> All right. Uh, who's the green axe? Me. All right. Uh, here we go. Having warned you, it fires its short bow with an advantage. 24, another critical hit. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> How much? Eight points of damage. Oh, good. That's not bad. That's, that's oh, all right, man. You are very well prepared. You take that arrow, but you are still standing strong. A second arrow comes at you. With an eight, it's you, you have do, you've ducked out of the way, yep. and it it runs a little you're a little bit farther past you, right? But with his disengage, you don't take an opportunity attack, but it cannot make it to the platform. Man, it's <laughs> last one. Oh, look Three, at that! Three, lucky you. <laughs> this one over here. But remember, it doesn't have a bow. That's it does not. This one ha does not have a bow. Very good. So it has to run out of the smoke, and as it runs up to you, it does not have advantage as it tries to chop you down on the way through. It's already done. It's a disadvantage. It's got its scimitar. And he's still injured, isn't he? 
He is injured, that's very true. With a 23, I believe he hits you with the scimitar. Uh, that's still a you get slashed through a gap in your armor oh. for seven points of damage. Oh, right. oh, okay. No, no, I'm still alive. Still hey. up, hey! Well, that's yeah, very cool. strong healing. It's a good thing you did the what massive healing. Yeah. Against I'm down one. to four. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's plenty, mate. You did the uh, same thing. I cast healing at distance for. Um, <clears throat> What's your character's name? But two Sorry. shots. Vol. It slashes again with the scimitar. They all get two attacks. I thought you just attacked him twice. I attacked him once, didn't I? No, you critically hit him the first time and the second yeah. time was. Yeah, I, I rolled damage. Oh, with seven. oh pardon. Yeah, the damage was seven. Different goblin. <laughs> no, yeah, so this, yeah, the, this one uh, struck twice. This, is, oh, this right. one the, ran through. This, did once this, with, this one yeah, missed the, the yeah. second one. They're all attacking yeah. twice. This one only. Hit me, hit me this was just hit you the first time with that critical yeah. hit, but the second time with the 15? Nope. Ah, it hits your armor, your armor hanging in pieces, but it hits a strong part <laughs> remaining of your armor and is stopped. Uh, Not just the armor rib. at this point. It just hits a rib. <laughs> and again, they're just they're just getting you out of the way. They're, they were hoping to take you down so they can make it, but they did not make it, thanks to your strong stand. <laughs> we are going to go back to the same <laughs> initiative order that we had before, so we're starting with you, Sarya. We're bonfiring. We're <laughs> light this little shit on fire. <laughs> All right, bonfire. Not, not the one that always kills me. Yeah. <laughs> Shouldn't you kill the one that's got more health? Okay, fine. The one's got more health. <laughs> Whichever you like. That's it's your one. choice. Yeah. How, how wide is the bonfire? I mean, if it's wide enough. Yeah, it does a dexterity <laughs> save. You don't want to look up his dexterity. Oh. Yeah, and what is your can't. DC again? It's only fire anyway. Uh, DC oh, okay. C yeah. is 13. Oh, it dodges out of the way. So as the fire rises, it scampers out of the way and is unaffected by the bonfire. That was that. All right. Uh, that was your turn, unless you want to move. I'm moving. I'm moving. Oh, it's the healers. <laughs> okay. Shudian, what are you going to do? Um, I'm going to second wind. All right. Um, Bonus on that. And it's a D10, yeah? Yep, yep got a D10. Uh, eight on that one, so I'm um, plus two. Oh, plus two, um, so yeah. ten, so I'm back to four, uh, twelve. Very yeah. good, yes. all right, well, yeah. Um, and I'm going to hit this one if I can. Sure, yes you can. Um, which, uh, what was that? was ten again, wasn't it? Yeah, the... Um, the twelve, wasn't it? Yeah, sorry. <coughs> was four. Um, hmm? Plus... With math? Nine. Uh, nine. nine. Nine total? Yeah, nine. Oh, uh, yeah. you have a plus five on your axe? I think. Uh, uh, look, yes, look yeah, next, that's a plus five on the. Look next to Great Axe. That was probably your plus to hit. So uh, you oh, see it says D12 wait, plus you, something. Yeah, you need to, to roll a D20 for the oh, hit oh, part. Be, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, 20. Oh, oh my oh, god! Yeah, Crystal hit! Yeah. Good. Now you're yeah, so first you do... 20. That's So, very good. So first first time you roll the d20, you got a critical hit. Now let's keep that one roll for the four. Roll it again because it's critical hit. You get to roll damage twice for that. That's a total of nine. Now next to your axe it says d12 plus something. What does it say? Five. Yes. Three. Plus three. You will not say plus five. Oh, three, three. Yeah, plus three. That's your strength bonus. Yeah, not your proficiency, but your strength bonus. So that total is enough to cut this thing into pieces. Okay. So yeah, but, uh, down it goes. That's some serious revenge. Chopped in half. Yeah, Very yeah, good. Yeah. Shudian takes it down. So just to interrupt for a second, these still have an armor class of 15. Yes, they do. Okay. Yeah. And about a 20 always hits regardless, so it's a guarantee. No, no, but just if it's, yeah, if we don't mm. get a 20. That's right. <laughs> just check. Okay, Gammy, what are you going to do? Okay, well, um, can I move, can I move? Over to here or to this direction? Right. Yeah, do you want to shoot it or do you want to, st or do you want to stab it? Because one, two, three, four, five, what six. What revenge bonus do you get against the stab? Yeah, 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 that's true. Oh, it's not a stab, right. Five, that's right, I think, uh, yeah, you you you, uh, you can run over here and stab it. Out of the smoke, so I should be able to Oh, and it's next to your ally, too, right. yeah. And yes, but I'm on the other side of it, too. You can hit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, you can shoot it or you can sh you can just, you can chop at it. Oh, Which one do you have ready, your bow or your short sword? Just short sword. Okay, yeah, you've had your short sword ready. Yeah. Over you go. So go and move yourself the six squares, and you six, can get right one, next to it. Two, three, four, five. Yeah, five, six. six. Yeah. No, five. Oh wait, five because you're a halfling. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, five. you have to okay. shoot with the bow. Well, I'll use a bow then. All right. So running up yeah. to it, just so it can see okay. the look in your eyes as you draw on this one that took you okay. down. You it looks at you like you. It says <laughs> <laughs> with horror. That's it's it's you covered with blood. Yeah, I was gonna say the different one. So um, surprise. <laughs> Roll a d20. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Roll is against the same. Hey, 18. Yes. That's plus some stuff. That's great. Roll the hit. Roll. Yes, right. 
right. So 18 is job. plenty. Yeah even, yeah, even with your addition, that's more than it's AC. Oh, okay. see from now, it. it's a sneak attack bonus. So yeah. the damage Don't next to your bow is, is a basic damage. So next to the bow, it says D something, D6 plus three. 1, D6 plus 3. Piercing. Right? So we'll start with that. But because you have a friend next to it, mm -hmm. you can strike with a sneak attack bonus. So you get to roll an extra D6. So you get to roll two oh, D6s. So two D6s. Get, give them a second D6. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's okay. right. Yeah, do them all at once. Oh, oh nice. nice. Oh, this one. Just describe, yeah. you know, how this happens. You know, this is a revenge um, kill. So you put an arrow... Two. I think, I don't know. Yeah, it'd be four plus three, exactly. Nine plus three against a wounded one kills it. Paint us a picture. This is your revenge shot. Okay. <laughs> um, I right use the bow, hours. so yeah. I'll st I'll, the bow will hit his neck. Yeah. And um, is it just me or the other guy? Yeah, it's just well? you. No, it's right now. No, 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 yeah, I think it's double team this. Yeah. And um, maybe it hits like his juggler. Where yeah, and blood sprays on the other one. <laughs> yeah. And maybe. Could maybe get in the other guy's eye. And <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that that makes, let's, let's, let's see, we'll, 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 we'll see if we can work that in. Yeah, this one's covered with blood. Let's see if the dice agree with you when we Shot attack that one. one. Put it yeah. into the other guy. Mm -hmm. Yes, covered with blood. This one is still remains a target. Good job, Gammy. Um, what are you going to do? The other one's hanging before. <laughs> I mean, it is a yeah, sack of holes to get a blood. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like my my dice rolls are starting to go pretty shitty. So like yes, it. but this one's awake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, You'd have to grapple it, and then uh, so wanna, that would break play, my... so it wouldn't be able to go. Grapple will make it sure that it can't move, and then on your next turn, once grapple, you can I don't want to break my back, because then bad things happen. It's true. Good point. I could try to cut his way. Oh, out. Nice. Yes. Nice. Roll into. Oh, no, I'm rolling to whack it with my hammer. Okay, yeah. sure. Pardon me. I should have announced that. That's um, fine. I'll take your word for it. Um, and then what am I doing? A one DX. Where are you on the? You're number one. On yeah. this one, I'm doing. Yes, right. Exactly. Against, the one next to you. Okay. Yeah, All right. Jesus. Oh. Three. Three <laughs> wounds. It flip it over, please. But it gets cracked, but does not go down. Can I then? Because yeah, I didn't make a move, did I? No. no. I'm going to move over here. Okay, I'm yeah. Myself to move it to All right. Help. It uses this reaction to do an attack of opportunity against you. Oh, yeah, I forgot I could do that. That's right. Uh, no, it has this bow. So, yeah, because it shot you, it, is not, it, can't, it can't hit you with the bow. So it has to use a hand weapon. So it cannot do that. So no attack of opportunity for it. Good job. Taking another stand. What do you do, Schmad? I want to... Uh, use Sacred Flame, because I haven't used it for a long, oh, long time. Oh, good, yes. So it <coughs> needs to make a, against number three, I think. Against number three? Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, hang could on. I, could I make a strategic recommendation? What, number one? So yeah, because then he can still hit that one. Yeah, I was going to say, because I've just double-checked, because mm. it's 1d8, if I do oh, yeah. yeah. Chances yeah. are and I might not wounded? get because it's already wounded. All right, so it needs to make a dex save versus 13. Okay, yes, versus 13. Here we go. Seven, plus this bonus is still not enough. It gets burned by your sacred flame. Radiant flame surrounds it. And nice. as you can roll your damage, but that should be enough. Go roll the damage okay. just for fun. Yes! Mm -hmm. Crackle, crackle, this one dies in your radiant flame. Good. Ah, the Good. flame of the gods. Great. Good job. Oh, okay. last okay. one. Well, Somehow still holding on. Yeah. <laughs> Roll number three is, I'm assuming, staggering around because it's got blood in its eyes after the... Yes, uh, I like that. <laughs> yes, yes. I'll come up behind yeah. it. Yeah. We'll, we'll see if the dice right agree out. with that scenario. I'm going to try a different dice. <laughs> <laughs> that one. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. All right. Magic dice. Now, damage. Okay. Let's see. Hey! That was a really impressive spin. <laughs> no, you will not be able to repeat yeah. that if you try. No. Fantastic. So 14. 14, this one. Yeah, yeah. you actually cut this one into pieces yeah. and it's gone. Oh, I imagine it's going down. Boom. Go team. The yells all cheer. Oh, okay, the fight's over. Good job. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Blood spattered over the place. They're already <laughs> is, wiping is off the their artisanal over? machinery. <laughs> their fight is over. Okay, so move away. Afterwards, never judge what by what chips are on the side. Sometimes the DM just dumps them out on the table. Sometimes these are dead things. So that's that. Just because when we started yeah. last week, we, there were waves coming through. Yeah, so I yeah. had in my head that there might yeah, be some yeah. more waves. No, so it's, it's best not to distract yourself with that stuff. You can, you gotcha. can, you can, you can meta yourself it's out. Mad. <laughs> <laughs>
Good job, everybody. Yeah, more You've been what I had in my head. So, even though some stuff, uh, whatever that first uh, thing Incredible. stole, of course, you got off of his body. So, apart from, so nothing got stolen from this elven mm. village as a result, right? The stuff that it stole from your lure, that got recovered. Mm -hmm. The stuff that this one got in, it stole some things. It's dead. It had it on its body. You get that back, and you've restored all of the, this precious machinery to this struggling elf arzen community. Now, tend to the wounded. <laughs> yes. So oh, right. Call, call in the garden. Yeah. 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 As, as yeah. things, aren't they? Slightly yeah. Yeah. You all get 150 experience yeah. points. Oh yes. Oh, yes. Oh, this is a massively. This is a hard battle. This is a battle that's tuned to be hard, and that's the kind of thing you get. Uh, I'm not doing XP adding up every single goblin, but it's about right what it would be even if I add up the goblins, because it's a little bit too complicated. Goblins that running and that carrying all stuff. 1,100 have we been here the whole yeah. time? Sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah I don't keep oh, running like each other. Yeah, yeah, I don't keep yeah, running total yeah, myself. But I think... Yeah. yeah. Marvel. For some reason, I keep thinking your name's Adam. Sorry. <laughs> so. Um, cool, cool, cool. Good. Uh, of course, you you all quickly have a chance to uh, to do a short rest. But before you do that, you just realize how grateful the elves are. They all gather in the center here, and uh, they they want to give you a reward. However, I've got I've, I've got no damage of that fight somehow. Okay. Wow! No, I'm at 19 you, still for oh my last God. long rest. I had two, I had really? two goblins. Well, Somehow, that's what I'm like. Yeah. They never came up this area. They right, just went yeah. to the others. So that's the thing. Like, I was an easy target up the top there. Oh, yeah. boy. Somehow. Well. Um, the, the goblins didn't have much on them because they were sort of doing a final raid. The elves, they're pooling their free money together, but they're, but they're barely scraping. They're, a, they're, a, they're an artistic, artisanal community, you know. They're, they're barely making it by. Even though they've got some very nice, expensive machinery, they said that this is all the money that they have. So you each get 21 silver pieces. Oh, Oh, I gotta take a break then. We will in just a moment. Yeah. I've just got another thing Did to you do. Say 12? So 21. 21, oh, okay. 21, 21 silver pieces each. We put them in a the square, right? Or do we. Is it yeah, you can board? write down square. Yeah, they're coins. Um, two yeah, so you can write down yeah, the rest key section. Plus 20. Oh, I have yeah, done two in the place. school. I have two plus 21. <laughs> Yes. Hey, okay. memento okay. loot. Don't. Yeah. One, yeah. Yeah. one yeah. of the uh, ones oh, that was sneaking you. through has a very effective, oh, yes. but very yes. silly looking sniping she hat. It's a camouflage it. hat. Mm. Um, and uh, this what goblin. That, what do you mean by camouflage? Th this, 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 this is a young goblin. He, 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 has, he has this big hat that's stuffed full of like all this painted. He has like a ghillie suit ah. hat. Oh. If you wear this hat, number one, you'll look very silly. Number two, You'll get a plus one on your stealth if you're hunkered down in the bushes, you know, for a turn. You'll get a plus one on stealth okay. in, in order to, to, it's good for sniping. It's, you know, it's not a very powerful effect, but it, it works great. So, anybody who wants to have a sniping hat that gives them a plus one if you stay in the natural, uh, sort of woodsy space for a turn, you roll a d20 now. I'm going to roll a try. <laughs> Oh, oh, okay, roll 18. off. 13 14, to 13. Uh, oh, 14. Ah, oh, yes, 14. Yeah, okay. You get it. So, right. write down goblin sniping hat. I have I have nothing to do with stealth whatsoever. Yeah. And just uh, write <laughs> well, down the thing, I've got a um, I still have disadvantage goblin in the bag, stealth. Right? So, so that's what I was like, yeah. Minus on stealth. Yeah. What is it? Sniping hat. Sniping hat. hat. And uh, if you just write down just uh, June 8th, that way I'll wow. look up where the stats are. I think it's are, minus. So. Yeah. And sneaky fat. And that disadvantage. We're on something. Okay. Uh, the last thing to decide before the break, so I know how to set up, is uh, you hear uh, a confession from that goblin that was captured. Remember, we have that goblin that you captured down there? Oh, yeah. And you, the get, you get some information in the goblin in the bag as well. <coughs> you have to decide what you're going to do with these goblins. Uh, so I'll we'll discuss that on the break. Has, has, has more than 10 minutes gone by? <laughs> because uh, no, hot, though. Uh, you, you be, uh, do you take the goblin out of the bag right away? Well, that's what I was going to ask. Like, can we interrogate the goblin in my bag? Uh, sure. Uh, I don't think, I think once when it seals, like it's in an extra dimensional space, so it can't hear hear you. You no, have to no, let it out of the bag. Yeah, but it's, it's yeah, yeah, exactly. We'd have to, we'd have to let it out of the yeah. bag. Can, can we take it out of the bag? <laughs> yes, you do. Yes, you yes. interrogate yes. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. As soon as you open the bag, you <gasps> <laughs> 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 It's awake now. Yeah, yeah it's awake now because it's only asleep for a minute. I fell asleep and then. Nothing. <laughs> I think you're probably smart. Right or luckily, it had dropped its weapons. Otherwise, it might start trying to cut to its way out of the bag. I don't know if you thought well, of it that. Was, it was a slip. So yeah, 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 but it's got more chains. It's only last a minute. That's the thing. It took you more than a minute to get involved and to think. get into all this. But that's okay. That's, okay. Uh, we'll just say that that uh, that uh, his weapons were lying next to it. Okay. It's not trying to cut its way out on the way in the bag. He's got. He's a great guy. He's crazy. So here's what you hear. We're in the bag. So you hear. So now you know exactly what's motivating the goblins from the following. You uh, so he talks about Ziggy. Um, was it he? She? I forget what, what the number was. I think. 
Uh, I think it was she. She says that Ziggy, the head of the Shrine of Evil Chaos, mm -hmm. forces all the goblins to come to something called the Elimination Show. This is something that happens every once in a while. It gets announced, and that's what that sweep was about, where they're now not letting goblins leave, and goblins from a field are supposed to come in, but it's going to happen soon. It is a huge stage. It's everybody is in this massive room, like a, it sounds like a concert hall, basically. And Ziggy and his band and, and, you know, and the Shriners are up on stage and in the crowd. They take a look at the records from what the Cobol's been keeping from all the machinery dropped off. The goblin clan that has brought the least amount of useful machinery is brought up on stage and killed in a spectacular fashion to the tune of heavy metal music. And Ziggy will maim or kill the hobgoblin leader as a warning. As you hear this, you know a few things. One is, and also you get the idea like the goblins, like not going back to the Caves of Chaos is not an option. For whatever reason you can't quite understand, or maybe they don't understand, she doesn't know why, but the goblins have to keep staying in the cave. So they're all under Ziggy's thumb. If they don't come, they get killed. And he says, like, Ziggy has ways of finding us and killing us that we just can't fight. We have no choice but to be in this elimination mm -hmm. show. And so we have to go out and get the machine or have to get, bring it back. Oh. So you know that Ziggy is driving this through this elimination show. The goblins have to participate, and this competition kills them on a regular basis. Can we inspect the dead bodies to yes. see if they've uh, got anything like the any of the shards or anything like that that we know they might being used. Yeah, none of them have chaos them. shards. Yeah, none of them have chaos shards. Um, the bodies of the goblins don't. Mm. Yeah. What are we looking for? Are you asking a Anything that we, that we know that they don't yeah. might be used to track the goblins themselves. Ah, no. So yeah, as far as you can tell, no, the, 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 the goblins, you just, you just know that, they're, uh, that, that this one, she's, she's new enough to the clan that she's told, like, she, we, we, you can't stay away from the uh, Caves of Chaos. You have, we, have to, we have to stay at the Caves of Chaos. The Caves of Chaos are necessary, are necessary for the goblins to be at. You're not sure why? She doesn't know why. Just all the goblins know that you can't stay away from the Caves of Chaos for long. You have to return there. I'm getting them the so like as in the compulsion. It seems like that. Yeah, yeah, you're not sure of the details. You can do a separate investigation at some other time to discover more about that because there is a story about it, but she doesn't know it. Yes. What's the goblin's name? Uh, I haven't thought of one. <laughs> it's some sort of very hard to pronounce goblin language. No, I, I don't want to insult name. the goblin language Let, by reproducing it. Let's here. give this goblin a name. <laughs> yeah, you can give her a nickname because uh, I don't. I, I don't. I, I. I really don't want to do justice to her. I, true I, 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 th name. I think Catch the one Pikachu. that. Pikachu. <laughs> <laughs> Catch more. <laughs> I, I was going to say. Pikachu. I think the one that Prisoner. puts him in. In the bag, it should decide. Yes. Mr. Slave. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything but is. that. <laughs> so her name is Mr. Slave. Got yeah. it. Okay. All right. Fine. <laughs> so you've got to decide. Uh, remember, slavery is evil. So, <laughs> so hopefully it's just a nickname. Um, so you'll have to decide later on what you're going to do. Are you going to let her free or, or keep her in the bag? The, the goblins aren't exactly good at this point. No. But um, I, I, I'd want But good creatures don't even torture. Even evil creatures don't get tortured. I want to see... I want to see how long it, uh, what it would take to stop the goblin from going back to the caves. Because mm. if we can, maybe they can dry out from the, mm -hmm. from it all by staying with the elves for a while. Can, can, they, can they be negotiated with this one? We're letting it live and it will like scout for us into the cave or something? Let's like do that, that separately, yeah. So mm. let, I'll try to create another scene with this. I'll make a note Sorry. of that and we'll give some options. <laughs> and also if you come early, we can do something more sophisticated. Otherwise, in the next session, we'll all be able to answer yeah. that question. But for now, let's assume you're taking her with and I, I won't make you decide okay. how you take her with. So you want to take her with? Yeah. For now? Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. For, for now... Captive. Will she like come Make with us later. willingly, like follow? No. no. Okay. No. <laughs> she she absolutely wants to get away. I have medicals. Yeah. Well, we'll do the detail later on. For now, I'll just grant you like you have enough time. To, she's guaranteed to stay your captive yeah. until we return to the scene later on. Let's just grant yeah. that. Captive to you. or bag, mate. That's it. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. <laughs> no, not the bag. She says. <laughs> okay. Captive so it is. <laughs> the interesting thing is that. Everybody has to go to this scene. All of the, your enemies mm -hmm. uh, are going to be in this room together. Uh, which means that if you strike them while they're here, and also there's a lot of rival factions, get the idea that it's a very chaotic environment. All the goblins are there. You think, well, maybe we can get the goblins to rebel. If we get the reds or the silvers, if we get somebody to rebel against Ziggy, if we get Ziggy you know, to, to uh, somehow compromise during the show, your head starts to explode with like, 
if we just get everybody together, this is the way to take down the whole organization at once. Mm -hmm. From what you hear about the shrine, which is what she tells you about, there's a lot of little rooms and corridors and secret doors and stuff that if you just start taking them out one at a time, you're never going to root them all out. You have to take them down to one big blow. The Elimination Show will be your chance to take them down. They're on one big room, past all security checkpoints, right. and if you can just sneak your way in there somehow sure. and be in that room, you think you can cause some mayhem. And that will be a big finale to this arc if you can take them down. Uh, like I say, then there's a big spectacular execution which makes everybody very nervous, very tense, and really focuses a lot of attention on the stage. So you think it'd be a great time to, to uh, strike. Now, if you're clever, you can get into the shrine maybe undetected because you know about that silver keyhole, you know about that little <coughs> red mirror fragment. So thanks to your other adventuring, you think you have, you have ways to get in deeper without you know, doing a full frontal attack. So good job on that. You need to get in there first and surprise them. We'll decide that later on, but your next step is to go to the shrine because you've learned enough information for the big final battle. You'll need to find some good advantages on the way. So when you're in there, you'll need to find some way to get the drop on them, use, use factions, use rivalries in order to, to weaken this massive number of enemies. But we'll decide that later on. You realize time is pretty short for this, that as far as you can tell, this elimination show can happen anytime soon. She doesn't know exactly when. She just knows that after the sweep, it happens soon. You have a choice. It's still like late afternoon. You could march now, you'll go somewhat into the evening and night and get to the shrine, uh, the Caves of Chaos, tonight. And only there take a long rest. Or you could take a long rest here in Nyladell, take off first thing in the morning, uh, and you, you think that the ch chance is probably pretty good that you'll get there before the show happens. You hopefully you'll have enough time. There's a slight risk. Right, so long delay things due to long rest, I think here. long rest here. The other benefit of long rest here is you sense that the elves, they all do their thing very early in the morning, but tonight they want to have a meeting to talk to you because you get the sense, oh, maybe you can make an alliance with them, maybe you can get some more reward from them, maybe you can set up a strategic alliance with them, and we'll cover that in our last Maybe we have night. a chance of If you stay, we'll, 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 do that, we'll do that negotiation. <laughs> uh -huh. These are wood elves? Oh, wood elves. Yeah. Wood elves. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you can stay here, find out more about them, and try to turn them into you know, stronger allies that can actually help you in this fight if you convince them very well. Mm -hmm. So that would be your choice if you stay would, here. So do you stay here or do you leave? Would just, um, if we stay here, um, well, 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 if we stay here, then I'll ask my question. There's yeah. probably no yeah. point until then. What does everyone want to do? Stay here, uh, leave, like leave to tonight, go. and sleep there, or stay, stay here? I'm just staying. would like to stay here to get a long rest, just basically to refill mm. the spell slots, because Shmarag is out of spell slots, and Shmarag would also like to refill their hit dice. Sure. In case, because this, this sounds like yeah. it's going to be a tough battle. So long rest I would like sure. to be uh, as prepared as possible. I'm okay. fine with staying here. Right, and if we long rest now, we level up, don't we? Uh, yes, you have a chance yes. to level up once you yes. long rest. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, yes. I would rather um, get the march on, on them and get um, fight, um, learn the battlefield before we um, long rest. So we are right there at the, um, the point of the fight mm -hmm. and we can see where everyone's moving get the advantage straight up and then long rest so that we are right there on the go yeah, to get to, to not well. nail them. Mm -hmm. If we stay here though, then like temporarily, while but, we're resting, we mm -hmm. can negotiate with the but then, the elves, but then we have to ask the elves to come with us to... Do we? Will right. they even well, come? We, we, we it's a possibility, that. yeah. You think that by negotiating, you might get the elves to help you out. Like you might convince, have, if you stay here for mm -hmm. long enough, you will have the big talk to all the elves, describe to them the threat, what you know about why, why they're concurrent being raided. Would that happen the rest? What? Would that be happening concurrent to the rest? Or? Yeah, before the rest, mm -hmm. yeah. So he knows that they're only all going to be gathered <coughs> this evening. Uh, by the time, if you, you can't go on the march, you'll be, you'll be marching in the middle of the night if, if you wait until mm -hmm. this. So and you're, and you're kind of got a kind of binary choice. Leave mm -hmm. right now, don't do the long rest here, do it there. You'll get like a 12 hour, you'll get there 12 hours sooner. If if you go right now to the Caves of Chaos, or if you stay here, you'll have time to have this negotiation with them, have the long rest here, and then take off first thing in the morning and then get to the Caves of Chaos. I'm for information gathering and seeing what we can mm -hmm. find out about these from these wood elves, and also they may be able to supply us with things like top up our rations mm -hmm. and things yeah. like that. They might have another scroll for you. Mm. <laughs> well, they're artisans, they might give you a nice, nice set of clothes, or yeah, they might give you more armor. Yeah. <laughs> Fix up your armor. Okay, well, everybody sort of had their say. Yeah. So yeah. raise your hand if you want to stay. Yeah, I'll we'll stay. Okay, majority yeah. rules, we stay. Yeah. All right, so you yeah. will stay. We'll take a break now. They're very <laughs> grateful to you, and uh, you'll have that discussion. <laughs> and uh, you might want to think about you know, what you remember about the elves and what, uh, how you might influence them. But we'll get to that in a moment with a special scene we call the Big Roll, which is a big mm. plot branch that you do with oh. your negotiation and soft skills oh. or creative use of your skills. Mm. A bit like that thing you do with the Kobold, but in a different format. Please take a break, come back in the five minutes, and we'll do that for later. Cool. Right, yeah, think... Videos when I explain that, so I do a DM video on Patreon, I explain like how I build each session, how I balance it, it's quite, uh, quite interesting stuff. 
So uh, here we're going to do a, something called the Big Roll, which is why it's up here on the screen. Uh, it, this affects an NPC alliance with something I call the Big Roll, which is an invention that I made that's basically a kind of skill challenge that involves everybody. I think uh, we did this with the Kobolds. This is a little bit different, yeah. So it's very similar. So the Kobold was an RP battle where it was like a jury that you're swaying back and forth. This is one that is one big climactic role that has a few different outcomes. So it's okay. a big plot branch, but you all contribute to it. So similar kind of idea, but with a Remember somewhat the different kind one? Of sharpness to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Okay, That's so uh, as I do this, I'll That's explain what it is. <laughs> okay, so here in that main platform in Nyladel where you did that final stand, uh, the scorch mark from the bonfire, you know, having been scrubbed and sanded out, of course, uh, the blood having been cleaned up a few hours later. You've all had the benefit of a short rest, by the way, um, so, but don't distract yourself too much with this because you're probably not going to care about your hit points right now. Mm -hmm. um, but do restore things like your, uh, your, your second wind or whatever else you get back on a short rest may have an effect here. Hit dice only come back on a long rest. That's right, yeah. I don't yeah. think I could So you, you can rest. spend it to get hit points back, but not, you're not going to, unless you <clears throat> choose to sacrifice hit points, don't worry about your hit dice right now because you, you are due for a long rest coming yeah. up and you think you're pretty safe here. All right. So, uh, having done that, all right. So I am going to uh, show you how, so it's a big branch point. I want to have one die roll, one d20 by one person, based on their skill, is going to come out with an outcome. And there's three possible outcomes, low, medium, and high, depending on exactly just how <coughs> high the die is. Low means that the elves remain kind of, you know, they're grateful, of course, but they're going to really stick to their own business. There's some other things that complicate this as well, so you're not going to really advance them as alliance or getting help. In the middle means that they'll trade with you very happily, they'll help you with some, some things, they might, uh, they'll, they'll uh, make this a, self, a safe place, so you can turn this into a safe place where you're welcome to stay. This will extend into Epic 2, as I call it. So as we go forward, you're starting to put pieces into place that even after the Shrine of Evil Chaos thing is done, you might uh, be able to come back here and have a solid alliance with these elves. That would be a good thing. A very high result means that they're eager to help you and they might give you allies, might give you a follower, they might give you extra loot, extra things like that. So those are the three different outcomes. Now, the bad news is that you uh, would have to normally roll a 29 on a single skill check, which sounds nearly impossible, but it's not impossible because you're going to have help from your other people. The one person who rolls has to make a 29 to start to succeed, but each of the rest of you can contribute up to five points, anywhere from one to five points, based on your own skill checks. Mm -hmm. So everybody here does a skill roll. The people who do the contributions, the, the contributor ones, they each add one to five and we pile up a lot of beads and that'll be a big plus that you do as, as the lead person rolls and tries to make that 29. Also, uh, yes, you can roll with advantage if you do a sacrifice. Not all of you might be able to do sacrifice because at this point, if you're a spellcaster, you have to use, if you have a special, if you have spell slot open after that battle, you can roll with advantage on your, on your thing. So that's something to keep in mind, that if you're a spellcaster like a cleric or a wizard, you have to use a spell slot to get advantage on this. Otherwise, you could do other things to sacrifice, like with items and stuff is probably appropriate here. Mm -hmm. Uh, that, 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 that you weave into the story. World facts also help. So if you use something that's written on your character sheet or that you know that you remember me saying about the world, you can get an extra like plus one or plus two you know, on each of your rolls as well. So you get to tie some things together. So all result in the big roll to get that 29 to get the results you're looking for. However, 29 is the base DC. I'm going to raise this by a few points for a few conditions. Number one is there is a rumor that you keep catching as it goes, like you feel like everybody should be very grateful, but you keep seeing elves, they're sort of like looking at you in this very sort of suspicious way and sort of talking to each other, they move off. And some of the stealthier ones, like maybe Gammy sneaking around, sort of overheard something. There's a rumor going on that some elves believe that you actually brought the goblins here deliberately. That you came here before the goblins, that's very suspicious. You know, did you want to be heroes? Did you want to manipulate the elves somehow? You know, but you hear the counter argument, well, no, the goblins have raided us before. You know, these people rescued us. But there's a persistent, like, rumor of convinced elves that seem to be starting a talking campaign against you in the background. You don't know where it's coming from. That's something you can investigate, you know, at some other time uh, about why this is being said. So that adds one to the DC. Destroying nature. Somebody did set something on fire at some point. 
who could that be? <laughs> that adds one more. So they're, 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 they're like, they don't, they, you know, this, this made a few of them, you know, a little bit more tilted against you. The mood is a slightly tilted against you, so I added one because you did damage nature in the course of your defense. And one for a goblin got through and did some pretty significant mayhem and killing. Even though no machinery is stolen, uh, I still had to add one for that goblin getting through. So our total now is 32 that you have to make, but again, with these contributions and with advantage. We'll talk about how you get advantage and all who the contributors are after we brainstorm on what these ideas are. What it comes down to is one of you makes a skill roll. And you also kind of compose a story. You're talking to all of the elves at once. The elves are loosely led by people who refer to these two elves that are called mother and father. Uh, they are a married couple. Uh, Emeril is their son, by the way. So Emeril was the one who held the log uh, as you crossed the river. And Emeril is their son. He's there as well. Uh, they're not like king and queen type leaders. They are sort of like opinion leaders. They have sort of like a loose collective here. So you know they have some sway and, and they're sort of central to this discussion. But you're talking to all the elves. And you're trying to convince them of what? The default thing is help us out with material, with allies, with a follower. Send us a, your best warrior to come with us to help us take down the Shrine of Evil Chaos. We know, we know what it's like there. You would use these facts to do the best possible role. We, you're going to keep getting raided forever unless we take it out. So help us out any way that you can. That's, that's the default. You can collectively say, no, we want to change the elves in some other way. We want to, for example, convince them to move away. <laughs> you know, like Leave this spot entirely. You know, Get out of here because we should give up on this fight. You could try to convert them to like a new religion or a whole new sort of ethos. You try to really change their attitude, you know. <laughs> yes, you know. <laughs> you can convince them just to, uh, to defend themselves better. Like uh, you say, oh, well, you might need to be able to defend yourself as well as possible. So the reason you should help us out is because you know, we can, if you make us allies, we'll teach you a bunch of things to defend yourselves. Or maybe we'll teach you things to make you more prosperous. You know, you're obviously barely getting by here. You know, we'll, if you make us allies, in return, we'll give you advice on how to you know, improve your economy, essentially, improve your trade and all that. So you see, you want to offer them something like, why help you? Why become allies with you? Why risk their lives and their treasure uh, solving this problem? So each of you are going to use these various facts to make this argument. Um, so, based on that, think of, let's just brainstorm for a while. I can lead, but mostly it's going to be you talking. I'll write down ideas as I hear them and start the biggest strategy first. Like, what do you want the elves to do uh, as a result? Certainly, you want them to help you out with stuff. But what's the kind of thing you're going to dangle in front of them you know, as the incentive to become allies? Is it defense? Is it economy? Is it uh, to pick up and move? What, uh, give some ideas. And everybody, you know, let each other talk. Try not to cut down each other's ideas. You're just building up ideas. No need to refute each other's ideas. Let's just get some positive things on the table. Philip will always be the ally. Mm. Yes. I was actually thinking in order, as an idea to get them to trust us, I was wondering if I could, Shmara could sort of seek out or asking mother or father who would be their top religious elf and talk to them about their deity and the the way that their if they have magic how it works because Ishmaragd is not entirely convinced that the path that their deity has put them on is what they want mm. and is on a path of searching for possibly changing to another deity so hoping to open up to vulnerability going I Shmaragd is I am looking to maybe become more attuned with nature and and talk to that um their high sort of priesty yeah. cult leader elf whatever you, whatever it is good um, cult leaders. <laughs> look because shmara has been thinking about no, whether life yeah. is the domain that best suits them or whether um nature or tempest might be more in line with Okay. What they want. Yeah, that, that's great. That's uh, that's a really great tactic. So so to, uh, I've, written, I've written that down. So, a, yeah, on, on, on on to be so we're going to boil this down to tactics eventually. So yeah. let's try to go up one higher level. Let's talk about okay. what's the strategy. Like what's the strategic goal? That would be a tactic to pursue one of your strategic goals. I've I don't understand that down. the difference between tactic and strategy. Strategy is like what's the end. What do you want the elves to do? Like what does success look like? So Ideally. if you succeed, how do you want the elves to behave? And and or and also what what is the thing that you could? What's a massive thing you do for the elves? Is this religious thing to make them better defending themselves? Is it to inspire them to move to a different location? Is, are you inspiring them to improve their economy? That's a tactic that can help any of those goals. How do you want the elves to be different through your help? What are you offering them as allies? You know, there's a, that's your sort of big strategic goal. How will the elves be different uh, as a community 
by the time you walk out of here having helped them. Probably so, safety um, yeah. and protection. If we can eliminate the threat to them, then... It, it sure. yeah, 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 definitely so, taking yeah. out yeah, yeah. Australian vehicle cases is so, definitely that's a big offer so you have. And that's going to be they the default. They don't want to keep on getting attacked. Yeah, but, but additional that yeah, so that's good. Do you want if you want to make them more ready to you know, take on some of the, the the mop up after after you've taken down the shrine? If there's any more assaults, do you want them to be able to defend themselves better, or do you want them to have some other change in some other way? Give them a fish, feed them for a day. Give them a fishing rod, feed them for a lifetime. We, they should be wanting to become more. Um, ability to we, we take down the main threat and they mop up and make sure that nothing comes out out of it. Yep. So I've got an idea. To make an themselves idea better, defend themselves because as we established, they didn't do a very good job of defending themselves. They yeah. needed you to shoot all these goblins and things. So that's one outcome you could have is make them better at sort of you know, training them militarily essentially. Yeah. Yeah. So that's one idea. But what's another big goal? Let's well, a big a goal ideas. would be to, to take out their enemy. Yes, so I think that that's, yeah, that's, so that's a guarantee. That's so let's say everything yeah. is going to involve you taking out the enemies yeah. because you're destined to take out the shrine for your own purposes. They mm -hmm. should support us like a patron. Like they should like like patron. Uh, rolling no, rolling. <laughs> <laughs> um, they should. They should, the camera. <laughs> <laughs> they should want to like um, give us tons of money, resources. Certainly, they, they should want to yeah. not just as friends, but also yeah. as like where their protectors, and they should. That's good. It looks like everybody was really pitching an idea. So yeah, I think that that also fits into. Uh, I like the idea of defending them, defending themselves. Certainly, they you want to get stuff off of them. So what's mm -hmm. pretty much set is you definitely want stuff. You know, mm -hmm. weapons, an ally, uh, uh, all that, and you want to take out the shrine. Th what you're deciding now is what additional effect do you want to have on the elves? Do you want them to be better defending themselves, better building up their economy, moving to a different location, converting to a whole religion to get divine guidance? What's a big way that you want to change them? Because this will permanently change them in the world. I know one way of commerce when, when because the goblins and hobgoblins have gone on to other farms or other places, that means that they don't have enough things. So the elves can come in start trade routes, start Surprise. trading with the, supplying them, mm. helping them out, and just To the villages that have been raided? To the mm. villages that have oh, been raided, okay. and just yeah. build up that economy. Helping that economy group. will help everything else in... Yeah, and they won't in, need, in and they won't have as much fear from these goblins because mm. We're getting them to Okay, with good. This one. And we're just putting new ideas in yeah. there. We've written that down as a, as a new not, additional thing. Could we not also sort of make it, I guess, safer for them to be able to travel to other wood elf villages and stuff like that? Because we've eliminated this Oh, let's put that as a different area. one. Yeah, okay. So train them to travel more safely. Yeah, okay. I like that. So that. So we'll pick one of these things. That's yet another thing they could do. So one is build up trade routes, economic power. The other one is you no know, more safety during trade is a slightly different effect. Like we're gonna teach you how to be adventurers and move over the land you know, safely and, and, and all that. That would have a slightly different effect. And that's another good big goal, so I've written that down. Uh, and who hasn't spoken yet? I know you've got another idea. Have, do you have an idea to put on the table? Uh, no, I don't actually. Okay, <laughs> okay, sure. You've got a religion idea, mm. I don't? I don't want to change their religion. <laughs> okay. Uh, you don't want to promote defense the church of He-Man? Yeah. <laughs> we've, we've covered defense, we've covered offense. Yeah, is there another goal? We'll pick one of these goals, but is there another goal to get on the table that's well, different than these? Uh, it's a little controversial, but I've got this great contract that if you oh, want to sign, ah, sign sure. on, you, it promotes safety and defense and power, and you'll never have to worry about getting Talk to them, not again. me. It, it, it sounds it. like a pyramid scheme at this mm -hmm. point. Look, look, all we need is a sounds few like early more backers. More <laughs> And this will get off the ground wonderful. Like, oh, yeah. This, yeah. This, this is like perfect. Like, don't give me those looks. <laughs> the, <laughs> these, oh, yes. Yeah, so Stop trying to flog me your essential oils, man. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. essential Kickstarter claim. Snake oil. <laughs> no. it, I don't need all of them. I just need a few of them to get the ball rolling on this. Like, sure. And if they learn to travel, they can also go on and be other salesmen of, as well. Okay, so I'll put that on, on the table as another thing that we could just, all decide to do, just which is get them on board with devil power, right? Like get aligned with the real power in this world that you have an in on. <laughs> and then they would come away better empowered through. I just devil. want to ask one question about this one. Do they have to contribute a, a small amount of gold each month? No, no, no. <laughs> is that called tithing? <laughs> tithing? Is there a new idea to put on the table as a big goal before There's we pick one? Well, th there is one one thing that comes from the traveling and everything, which is a sharing of skills, a sharing of labor. Knowledge and... Yeah, yeah okay. a sharing yeah. of knowledge. Mm. Okay. Um, good. Sharing of magic. Right. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so they, they should take in more knowledge, yeah? Mm. So they, they should, they should yeah. take in more knowledge, but they can also give more knowledge to the other villagers, the other, other 
wood elf vill villages sure. as well. Sure, let's put that as another yeah. idea where... You're creating your own militia. Like, one is, like, more of an economic sort of, tr like, less worth the economics of the trade. The other one is less worth the knowledge trade. They're two yeah. different things to trade, and we want to pick one yeah, thing. Yeah, because I just saw how we took down these goblins. Mm -hmm. Now they've got some idea of what they could do to yeah. also yeah. take down the goblins. Like, they saw what magic we use. They saw yes. what so attacks magic, we right. use. They saw me get hit. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Unless somebody's got a completely different idea, yes. we'll, we'll pick one of these and then narrow down. Unless somebody's got new to add. So here's what I've got. One is more of a milit so for a military <coughs> one, like how to defend yourself just through military might. You know, so you'd be making an argument about just how to be better fighters, better physical combat, how to set up their their defenses better to handle you know just various dangerous things, goblins and others. That's one. The other one is economic, just through just normal trade goods. Let's get you uh, equipped so that you can. A trade with those farm villages and figure out what kind of goods they want so you can basically make yourself more economically powerful and that will lead to more prosperity and that'll be good for you as well. So that, that's another, another thing you can offer instead. The third one is like that, but it's more like we're going to make sure that you can travel more safely. You know, so you, your economy is your own, but you'll be much better at traveling over land and getting to your trade route destinations if you train us. All these things, by the way, are equally likely like to succeed, and they're equally probably useful in the world. So they're all equally good ideas. It's more like what just what's the kind of effect you want to have, what feels best for the story. So don't weigh this on a sort of like a metagaming thing. They're all pretty much equally probable of success. But how do you change them? That's getting to travel more safely. The fourth one is embrace the real power in Timberway Valley, which is the devil, right? Ally, ally with the devil, and use that power in order to protect yourselves long term. Get with the program. The last one is get more knowledgeable with magic. So the thing you trade shouldn't be physical goods. Learn more about magic, discover more magic yourself, learn more magic from others, and get some sort of magical trade going. And they become a much more magical society as a result. So of those five things, uh, what, what, uh, what do you all advocate? Devils. I mean, I've already forgot the first one. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> yeah, I'll do that. One. Yeah, yeah. But, but start discussing. While I write them down, discuss mm -hmm. the ones that you do remember. All right, so there was... So if travel. No, no, I'll, I'll write them down. Yeah. I'll write them down. So, so we don't need to recap them. Okay. I'll, I'll recap them. But if you remember one of them, just start advocating what one, one of them that is. I'm kind of thinking the trade one almost because, I mean, they're artisans, aren't they? They're, they are, yeah. Yeah. Um, the only trouble with raising their economy without getting the defenses that they become more of a target then because of. Oh, I, I yeah. just forgot something that we should put on there. Mm -hmm. the, sure. co the cobalts aren't are working. For the others right now, if we can take out the other, the um, the other people, the Shrine. goblins and uh, the shriners and everyone, uh, the kobolds can so still work. The kobolds can still work. They can just work with the elves. Mm. Well, that's a trade. That's a trade. It, it's trade. a different type of trade. Yeah. That might be a tactic to support one of yeah. these. So yeah. that's probably more of a tactic to support <clears throat> one of these goals. It doesn't sound like a totally new goal. So, but. Trade, trade in all knowledge, not just magical knowledge, not just mm -hmm. devil, uh, devil power, not just um, martial education power. It's just education mm -hmm. in general. Mm -hmm. If we okay. if we train them, uh, train up a militia at the moment, they can help us. They can inspire confidence. They can take it back to their village and grow it that way. As long as I'm signing people up to a contract, I'm yeah. okay with that, it. Except fine. for the contract. Yeah. <laughs> Does that sound like a sixth thing or a way to support one of these five things? I'm, I'm actually thinking it's a combination of a, a couple of them. Mm. So in, incorporating the travel ones. Plus, the yeah. <laughs> I don't want to say this one, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, so let, let's see if uh, maybe a, a vote. Which, which two does it seem to be a combination of? Defense with weaponry. Number two is get better goods to trade to improve your economy with the river towns. Number three is safer travel as you trade. Number four is joining the devil. Number five is trade and learn magic in particular. And think about which ones you all advocate. The last chance before people vote. You can advocate. I, I think one and two are my pick. Yeah. Well, I'm all for it. Yeah, so, like, what, well, why, well, why would you well, want to do you want cool to power? Vote for okay, well, look, I'm, yeah, then, then it'll come down. Once I'm, get I'm a good character, so I yeah, think the devil get trust thing is no kind of silly. I think trade magic specifically is just redundant because we can just teach them to trade stuff. The magic will come later. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then the yeah. safer. Remember, ways, these will be I mean, equally good, so they would have different flavors. They, they, yeah, yeah, number oh, yeah. two and five be equally effective, but I, have different I'm, flavors. I'm just saying, in, in like from my reasoning, anyway, yeah, it's sure. like sort of it just sort of ties into one another. And the same with the safer being able to travel safer. I mean, that's in my mind. That's the same as number one. 
Okay. Who else wants to? Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Mm -hmm. Who else wants to convince somebody to vote a way that you are voting? I. I, I recognize that no one's going to vote with my vote. <laughs> just, just, I, just but not yet. I'm going to make this pitch. It's a literal cosmic <laughs> entity that will support you as long as you make this deals with it. You don't. It won't lie to you. It will keep its exact wording on what it wants, and you give. It's just talk basically. To them. A, talk to me. Talk to them. This is a business deal. <laughs> it's, it's just a business deal. Fuck me. I ain't, don't even convince myself. <laughs> <laughs> who else has got who wants to advocate something that they're voting for you want others to vote for as well um, well I just sort of say on the the defence and offence um, to me that seems to be the strongest at the moment because the, raising their economy will make them more of a target initially without it without having anything to defend it true that um, and the other stuff yeah there's no point there's no point doing the other stuff until you can actually protect that stuff mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Anybody else want to, uh, who hasn't spoken yet, wants to uh, advocate a vote in a particular way? I'd, I'd be going with what our little friend here has uh, said. <laughs> You're French. a dwarf. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, uh, one of the that 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 yeah. No, no. Our short, our short, stubby friends here. Yeah. Hey, this goes to all of enough. So, um, I would say one of the three. Lunch as well. Hmm. Focus on uh, now. Everything else will come later on. Anyway. Yeah. So let's try to boil it down to. So let's yeah. try to uh, vote on only one. I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm seeing a great way to combine them. I want. I want to try to move on as best yeah. we can. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have a question about the definition of one of these five? Because you're going to kind of you're going to kind of close your eyes and shoot out one to five fingers, and then just put your chip down based on what your fingers say. So anybody have any questions before you vote? Okay. Another minute to decide which of the five. You're just going to close your eyes you and hold out one to this five. Way, sorry, yeah, I sure. can't read it yeah. properly. You close your eyes, you hold out one to five fingers, and when you open what? your eyes, just put okay. it in. I do have a question. Yeah, do please. any of these affect the alignment of the wood elves? Would it change from their. Join the devil definitely would be <laughs> a, a, a evil alignment. Yeah. Uh, not to judge, yeah. but. Uh, well, oh, no, I'm judging. Judge, judge, but, judge. but yeah, you're yeah, right. Okay, neutral. neutral. Evil. Evil. Yeah, yeah, neutral. Are they currently yeah. just like. Otherwise, they're all, no, they're all no, neutral. neutral. Yeah, because they're, they're mixed. I mean, they're generally good. I mean, they're seeming to be good to neutral. They're more focused on survival and protecting elven values rather than. Them things like okay. for weapons, yes. they're not going to then go. Well, now we've got this evil. physical power. It's going now going to turn them to being like offensive. And yeah, there's no over. guarantee. But I don't see anything that that is that is beside number four that guarantees to shift their alignment one way or the other. Whatever their nature already is, is they'll they'll use that nature. Fisher King sort of scenario. Any other questions before we do a vote? Okay. So close your eyes and on three, hold out one to five fingers. One, two, three. Open your eyes and just put a chip next to it, or we have one one. So to, yeah, put a chip next to it, or whatever you think said. Yeah. <laughs> Not even joining the devil, <laughs> mate. You're a sellout. Okay. Uh, I'll so, wait till I've got a better deal with my hands. Where, where's that contract of yours again? <laughs> it's currently in hell. Okay. All right. Well, work our way down to number five. Great. Now let's have uh, so let's circle back to some of the tactical discussion I referred to before. Is there any sort of sub flavor of this? Okay, so you're using mostly defense with weaponry to do that. Is there any any way you want to further refine that as you figure out your strategy? You know, so we don't have to think about who's going to do the big role yet, but it sounds like somebody might use their uh, which weapon attack bonus, you know, and that will be the kind of that will give a flavor of the kind of defense they do. Is it more like a mechanized defense? Is it more like you know firing with arrows? Is it more like digging in with swords? Is it more setting up traps? You know, is there Anything, any way you want to refine this to, to sort of you know, put a special flavor on it? Does the um, do uh, religion? It could be like I would try to try to use use religion for surveillance, like you know, good defense is all about knowing your enemy's coming, so use the gods on your side. That would be a tactic to to support number one. Can we use basic knowledge from of the elves themselves to sure. influence us? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, you well, um, <laughs> you're steering them. So imagine yeah, that cool. they, they have a smattering of different expertises. Which ones do you want to sort of you know, work with in the few hours that you have to, to give them advice? I mean, I've go. got a I've got a, a land vehicle proficiency. Maybe we could get them to build like little wood elf tanks. I've got a proficiency <laughs> in playing cards. Maybe I can go more with them. <laughs> um, could. I don't know if this would count, so I'm going to ask it. Could I sort of, as part of that, being defense with weapons, also sort of, I guess this falls under magic though, being able to use me like a medicine check to find out one of the weak points of their oncoming enemies. Mm -hmm. Is that more of a magic thing, or is that a possible? Well, that's a sort of a knowledge check. Yeah. So okay. we'll do this where um, you know, each of you will pick different skills, but that's that's a tactic. So it'd be a more better battlefield medicine. So improve your ability to keep people alive and understand your enemies better. Yeah. Because that's so higher than my religion. So. Yep. Stay alive and. 
uh, assess weaknesses. Any other tactics or sub sort of uh, sub flavors of this particular defense thing that you want to get on the table before you narrow it down? The mere fact that we can train them in mm. uh, martial, ma martial, in the martial activities. And I was going to say, yeah. my background, I'm a soldier. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's right. We've got two soldiers. Yeah, that's two, yeah. Yeah. Some two, two oh, soldiers in our band. Two soldiers, yeah. That's why they're going to have a sick rock and roll choice. People that's people right. recognize the our nobles little are the ones that are in the They understand that that is. Ah, good. When you do your role, that's exactly the kind of thing that might give you a couple extra points. So anything that's on your character sheet like that can definitely add some juice to your role. Good. That's what this is all about, is discovering all the different aspects of your character that might give you a point or two. They yeah. speak Elvish, right? They do. Okay, cool. Can I um, speak some Elvish with them in private, saying... Yeah, certainly. When you roll, you might get a... Sign here. You, <laughs> you, might a, uh, <laughs> you might get a point or two for speaking Elvish uh, cool, when cool. you're supporting this tactic. No problem. So we have, uh, what's, what's the main focus? Better at shooting, better at melee, uh, religion to know what's coming, you know, better at surveillance basically, and religion be a way to support that, but many skills can support all these things. Building elven tanks, like building using vehicles. Uh, medicine uh, and other knowledge to, to stay alive better and assess the weaknesses of your enemies. Is there anything else as a brainstorm you want to put on the table before you sort of pick this as, as your main, your biggest thrust? Um. Can we inspire them for any of the any of these ones? Or yes. Mm -hmm. sure, yeah. Yeah. Sure so enough, this is sure this is again how they're going to end up if you succeed. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're kind of you painting a picture of what of are they going to look like when they're done. Yeah, we both got that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here's. Yeah, and then then we'll get to the rolling itself, and you'll pick. Well, a skill, increasing the shooting thing is probably good because they they have like hunters and stuff. That kid that we found was mm -hmm. a, yeah. a hunter. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Again, we, consider that. Sure, that's very true. We we could leverage that and say, well, look, we can. Help mm -hmm. you hone that particular martial. Yeah. It's so, yeah, again, all these are probably equally e equally powerful and equally likely to succeed. It's more like what kind of story do you want to tell? What do you want to have in your mind as, as what these people look like when you're done? But certainly, some of these things, you might get an extra plus one or two on the roll by pointing out that they're hunters. So, if, if you focus on that, that's a good one to mention. Now, one, I figure that, that if we focus on the martial and shooting, so mm -hmm. archery. Aspects um, with what we want to end up with is a militia of <coughs> basically people who hide and shoot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we should also focus sure. on. Um, yeah, like, definitely. So some we can contribute yeah. stealth, some we can contribute other things yeah. to support mm -hmm. shooting. I just, I've just realized gorilla tactics. They're in the the forest. They mm -hmm. can use mm -hmm. traps like pit traps and like bamboo mm -hmm. spikes mm -hmm. and all sorts of. Stuff like they would yeah. be great at that. And the elven blitz crate. With the yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and my so and traps. Vines and things. Yeah. Okay, that's another one that's on the list. Mm. Okay, mm. so we'll do one more sort of narrowing down. They've got some things elven on the table. Big con. <laughs> no. You can't see them way out in the jungle. So, so this is them, Pride and the you know you'll have a little bit of this. Won't be the only thing they're good at. I always lose my pen at the most critical. First, in that thatch hut for flame. So one is, these are all, you know, shooting bows, obviously, not shooting mm -hmm. magic. Number two is a real focus on melee, you know, open sort of melee attack. Another one is, three is uh, recon and knowledge. This is where religion would support that because the, the deities are good at sort of getting you knowledge. So recon knowledge of where your enemies are coming from, and that's how that's the key to your success. Number four <laughs> is tanks, vehicles. <laughs> But also this involves, you know, like basically you know, uh, using horses, beasts of labor to, to improve your mobility and to set up, you know, strong defenses, you know, be able to, to, to tow and construct things. So using sort of animal powers. So that's, that's fine. We'll keep that there. Um, uh, five is sort of, yeah, medical and, uh, and, and knowing the weaknesses. So knowing how to keep yourself strong and assessing the weaknesses of your enemy with sort of, you know, Anatomy, history would support this, stuff like that for success. And six is guerrilla tactics, which is not really staying in one place, moving around a lot, using the traps, ambush and traps. Vietnam won a war against mm -hmm. the U.S. with that mm -hmm. shit. Mm -hmm. Always love the fact that this guy's the, the one who's got the most de dexterity out of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and this is where you know, you'll know you start getting an idea of like, oh, who might be the lead role because they, they're especially good at some skill that might support one of these. So that might also advocate it. You, know, you might be, by, by one of these winning, it might make it easy to decide who's going to do the big role. The others will support it. Discuss. 
I'm kind of down for the guerrilla tactics and stuff because oh, they yeah. already shoot. Like, how much better can they get at shooting? Well, <laughs> they they only have a few hunters. They don't have that many fighters. Yeah, you just throw their artisans yeah. more than but, anything else. But put it this way: like, there's like um, a spy trap goes down and mm. one person's injured. It takes two people to take care of them. So you're you're constantly like every time you injure someone, you don't have to kill them. Mm. They they need someone else to take care of them. Teach them which to be keeps partisans. And, and all they have just changed the artisan from making chairs into just put a making in front of artisan, yeah. like the thing from um, oh um, artisan means um, uh, artesian or no no he was he said I'll let you finish sorry I'm, I'm interrupting I'm being rude. okay like they they they're making wooden chairs right now right so what's to stop them from making the thing from um, what's that movie. Predator, where there's a big, like Arnie, and they step on a spy trap and boom, boom. Sure. <laughs> the chair legs are, spot, are sharpened. Yeah. It's, yeah, certainly, it's certainly a pretty cool mm. visual, oh, anyway. Wouldn't, wouldn't take much modification. Well, like Part of sounds, think of like locals when you're being invaded going behind like the invading lines and disrupting that mm. and killing sort people. Sort of an insurgency type like, tactic. Yeah. I, mm. okay. Okay. Um, I was just going to say the gorilla traps sort of stuff um they have i guess they have the advantage of um lo location environment because they mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. already up in trees and they are already in somewhere that has dense coverage so yep. it feels like they probably already know though uh, what what's what's available to them i guess so yeah, we've like got you know, so you're so you're so 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 no, no matter what you're, you're going to add to their knowledge right. Right? you're going to improve one of these things a great deal the only reason why I'm not for the guerrilla ta tactics at this stage, is because we're talking about guerrilla warfare and traps, which means that they have to lure the people into it. Well, like a pack of defenses perimeter around there. Yeah, thing but if we're trying them. to get them to come with us to this show, they're not going to know the area either. Mm. The closest thing they'll know is that is to the. Well, well there's there's also there's 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 a good point, and I don't want to complicate this too yeah. much. That I wouldn't worry purposes. about how this affects their. This this affects how impressive you can be with your knowledge. It won't okay. affect. I, I won't. I won't take something off the table as as their reaction by sending mm. you an ally just because you picked one of these things. So okay. I don't want to complicate it too I much. I don't you think know, that this affects our battle necessarily in the. Mm. Well, so anyway, it because yeah. Mostly it's about like impressing them yeah. so much and they're so grateful they say, yes, please stay with us. We'll ally with you if you teach us all about this and therefore we'll help you. So you just want to get them on side and then that on sideness will help with yeah. whatever you want to do. Then in that case, I would be more inclined to, the, to go with the melee as we have got, not only do we have uh, two soldiers with, the, with all their experience anyway, we've also got two fighters so we're, we're down from <coughs> melee anyway. We've got those extra things in, in place. We want to show them this sort of stuff. We've okay. got the requirements for it. Shooting, we don't have too many people no. that can do that, even though you, I think both of you have, have some um, sort of projectile weapon. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. now I have Celia. You I'm do, gonna, yeah, but you don't. Um, um, recon, the only one who's dexterous is this, this guy. <coughs> Yeah, uh, tank cool. vehicles, long term. <laughs> <laughs> Recon knowledge could tie in religion uh, yeah. by a couple of people as well. But yeah. Yeah, oh, well, re still fair enough. religion part would actually uh, be okay with you guys. You I, don't, I don't think vehicles is realistic. I was so upset. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, see, siege weapons. Yeah, they can make them out of wood. They're artisans. They can build these things. Yeah, I'd say vehicle knowledge would be the, like, the, like the, large siege weapons yeah. would be part of the vehicle. I'm, I'm seeing the, the you know horse of tr the Trojan horse just barreling down <laughs> flames of <laughs> from this guy. Um, medical and medical. medical. Mm. So and you no able to use medicine to either keep the them them alive and safe in battle, or also being able to use medicine checks to know what are the weakness of any sort of these invading yeah. things coming mm. through. Yeah. Right. See with those with those ones as well. I mean. I don't think any, any of us are okay with it, but you two, well, well, good at that area, but you two would definitely be good at those ones. Okay. Yeah. Uh, who hasn't spoken yet wants to advocate one or the other before you vote? Just more to clarify, with the me me melee, me mm -hmm. melee, 
okay? Um, we, 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 yeah, because we've got <laughs> the soldiers here as well, we could also sort of teach them how to sort of form ranks and, yes. and like, I was going to say, what is, it, what is it the Romans did with the shield? Yeah, the shield yeah, right. barrier and all that stuff. Yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah, so right. that would come under that sort of stuff as well. So those Yeah, that distinct from gorillas, like, you know, hit them when they're not looking, whereas melee is like, you're not going to hide yourself very well, but you're going to be very strong. Strong. So, yeah, yeah, so it's more not just, you know, how to sort of deal with this close combat, but also all those other sorts of hmm. formations and, and better things yeah. like that. Okay. Hmm. Good. Any other questions or need for clarification before you vote? Yeah. Okay. So again, uh, of course, you have having the six finger if you can vote for number six. Uh, so, any questions before we do that? Can we get an idea of who they're going to vote? Yeah. We're good. We're good. Close your eyes. One, two, three. Hold something out. Still deciding. And open your eyes. And just go and put your chip based on what your fingers say. Yeah. Uh -oh. It's over here, man. Oh, is it? Thank you. Sorry mm -hmm. about that. Okay, all right. <laughs> Melee or gorilla and traps. We might be able to sort of blend these things together a little bit. I think if mm -hmm. we have a tie instead of sort of doing a tiebreaker, let's try to figure out sort of a pull between those, right? So maybe the gorilla is more like surprising them and then using melee to take advantage of that surprise. Is that sort of a fair way to combine it? Like mm -hmm. gorilla, that you're doing a lot of ambush, but once you ambush them, you're using mostly melee to, to yeah. strike at them with that. Yeah, so the, yeah, the gorilla stuff would be defense. Yeah, defend and hide and, 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 yeah, and, and, and conceal. Yeah. and. Just, Pick the weak point, yeah, and then, yeah. then, First then you go line out. of defense. Yeah. Second line of defense. And then you go out to open melee when it triggers. Okay. So based on all this, is it obvious who would do the big role? What you would do is it's a skill that you're good at, but one of your skills is your weapon <laughs> no, attack. Saying it's right. <laughs> so it could be a skill that's yeah. listed. Yeah. Uh, who's got the biggest? And here you just want to tell a good story as to why that skill matters. But your 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 uh, weapon attack or spell attack bonus could count as your skill as well. Remember that's another option that you have. Yeah, who's got the biggest hit at very hard skill? So my what we, attack bonus is plus four. What skill? Are we? Yeah, with the in this case would be a melee attack bonus. Who's, who's, who's got a melee weapon that's got a very good attack bonus? Uh, plus five, I yeah, believe. It, it, it has to be the two. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's only one point. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, this guy. Shit, so it's <laughs> got to be sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, even I say, me. not me. This, this guy can roll. <laughs> but, um, and it's always right. telling the story about, you know, this yeah. is the one that's kind of like leading the argument. Yeah, so be Shudian. Yeah. Is that okay with you? Okay. Or do you want to push it off on someone else? Mm. I can push it off, please. I, I can tell, tell the story if you someone else can roll. Dice roll. Probably, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Whoever tells the story does the die roll. That's the way. Uh, that's the way the die okay. gods work. Yeah. Okay. Shudian. Okay. Yeah. So Shudian, you imagine you'll be using your 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 main weapon attack bonus, your melee attack bonus, and that might be become the favored weapon of it. what what kind of weapon is it that you're doing anyway? Great axe. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Doesn't really mix in line with wood elves, does it? Yeah. Oh, it's good. Hey, axes. axes. You know, they're there. Yeah. Oh, yes, right. the no, they would never chop. No, they down sell. A tree. They sell axes. They don't use themselves. Like, okay, well, maybe instead of selling these axes, we used to chop down goblins and, and other things attacking it's, us. It's they a won't chop. It's you not can't change the nature. Won't chop down. It's not any good wood that's already falling off the tree. Yeah. Okay. Okay, now, each of the rest of you are going to think of a way to contribute that. Any skill can do. You just want to tell a good story. So any skill that you're good at that fits into as you're rallying them to use guerrilla tactics and then hit them hard with melee, what is some aspect of that whole tactic that you have a skill to contribute? You could just do your weapon attack bonus as well, but you know it's more fun to be creative if you don't mind uh, doing something like so that. So can I use my soldier background with my athletics mm -hmm. skill bonus yeah. and basically run them through drills for... Ah, um, sure, yes. For basically, what's what I want? Um, you know, long long term fitness. What's that? There's a yeah, endurance and that's it for endurance yeah, yeah. and and being able to you know withstand. That's a great idea. Um, yeah. you know, so there, you would say it's going to be an athletics check because you've got a, a, a soldier background will give you like a plus one or a plus two to that role because it just kind of fits the story with the world fact really well. And your role would then contribute. Yeah. Uh, what, anybody else know what they're going to do? To contribute? I guess I could use my survival skill with regard to the guerrilla tactics and yeah. things like that. Okay, survival skill. Yeah, that's a good idea. Right, exactly. So you'd roll survival to do your contribution. And remember, so, our, so th these are all contributing anywhere from <coughs> 1 to 5. And it's a DC 20 with advantage to contribute more than 1. Can, can we try to get rid of these? 
too late. Too uh, they're late. already they're already baked in. Uh, like the the rumors already going. You can investigate, but you don't have time to figure out is the that, source of the is rumor. That try to dispel any of them. Well, no. So you so you can use that as part of your story. So if okay. you use persuasion or something, say yeah. like I, you just to color your persuasion. The reason mm -hmm. that persuasion matters, is you might try to cancel off the rumor. It won't lower the DC, but it explains why persuasion is yeah. so important or history or something like that. Yeah. So okay. it's fine. Just build it into your story. It wouldn't just wouldn't lower the DC. In that case, because we both have got positions of privilege. Ah. Mm -hmm. Using that in association with, I'm going to go with one that I don't. I'm not strong ass, but it might it might be a good way of doing it. Performance. Ah, sure. To tell to tell interpretive dance. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> but to, to but to tell of how we met with. The son, the I can't remember his name. Yeah, Emerald. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's it. And and to tell about after we had crossed that bridge, how yeah. someone had greased up the yes, the yeah, to stop the other. That's great. Uh, sure. To try to help get rid of this one. one Very good. Because yes, we, yes. It shows that we have got, and I know. <laughs> oh, I see. It sort of counters that rumor. Yes, yeah, yeah, we, we yeah. If you wanted the goblins to attack, why did you make it harder for the yes. goblins to reach? We yeah. knew they were coming. We wanted to help the elves. <laughs> okay, good. That's that a great is. story. Yes. Yeah, yeah performance would be a great way to do that, and yep. uh, and I, I give you I give you a couple beads on that one because that's so yep. clever. That's very good. Okay, so you see, uh, if anybody else wants to run something by, but we'll, each of you will do your contributions in turn. We see you see what I'm doing here. Mm -hmm. So when we start doing this with the contributions, right? So you'll roll last. Mm -hmm. Now, one of you in any order is going to do that. You're going to be rolling that with a DC 20. <clears throat> now, let me talk about advantages, okay? If you are a spellcaster, you have to, if you're a primary spellcaster, which is the clerics and wizards, you have to use an empty spell slot in order to get an advantage. If you don't have it, you don't get to roll with advantage. So that's a little bit, but that's okay. You're depleted. You, you, did, you, you did your job there. Um, if if there's anything also like that you get on short rest, like your channel, if you haven't used your channel divinity, mm -hmm. so if you still have a channel divinity you didn't use, that still is magical power. They can still do. Ooh, and that resets on a long rest. It does. That resets on a long rest. Yep. So that counts. Yep. Kill. Okay. Good. So you've got some of that left in the tank. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything left in the tank? I have my arcane recovery. Oh, you haven't used it yet. No. Okay. I yeah. So you could have during the short rest. You could have used arcane. Yeah, yeah. I used, used it. Arcane I recovery used it in, the, in the short rest that we had. I. Okay, well, so you haven't had a long rest, so if you've used it during the last short rest... No, I haven't used, used it at all. Oh, you haven't used it? No, it's still there. Okay, yeah. So when's the last time that you did Arcane Recovery? Was it a different a different short rest that you did on another day? Have you done... Have you used the Arcane Recovery at all? How does it work? Oh, fuck yeah, me. during a short rest, you get more spell slots back. Did we have a short rest? No. Uh, yeah, what you had a short rest we? while you were setting up the traps and stuff oh, sorry, while you were preparing there. Yeah. Then... Is it ticked? Do you have a box yeah, there? Yeah, I've got a tick there. Though. Yeah, so I think that's when you spent it. So I think that while you were setting up the traps and waiting for the goblins to come, you all did a short rest. I oh, think you ticked right. that, and then you gave yourself another spell slot. Oh, because I, I just ticked it preemptively. Okay, whatever. Yeah. Okay, I don't. I can't I keep track I think so. Of this. I mean, just I can't keep honestly, track. if you remember, yeah. Then usually, when when in doubt, I go it's on the paper. So okay. if the paper has a tick, it's probably there for a reason. Okay. But I usually, remind people to erase it after a long rest. Let's just take us. I'm afraid that won't be on. Who knows? That's not, that's not it on. It doesn't matter. Okay. All right. Just hope for good luck. Yes. Uh, now, other ways advantage for those of you who don't cast spells could use items, right? So something yeah. that's you know worth worth probably worth a few gold, a couple a gold piece or two is is, is definitely uh, a good way to do it. But you want to tell a good story. If there's a good story, it could be something relatively cheap. If it's not such a good story, it might be something a little bit more impressive. I've got a couple of things that I can use. If it's super expensive, you have just a chance of losing it. So, so we do that. So don't be afraid to volunteer something quite expensive because you will have only a chance of losing it in the course of doing this. You're doing it as an offering, as a gift. You're burning <laughs> it. You're destroying it. Some other item. Well, they gave, they gave us 21 silver pieces before I, I, I can return their gift. Well, there you go. Yeah, exactly. It might as be a gesture to sort of demonstrate yeah. your goodwill. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, again, it's to mm -hmm. cancel out this rumor. So, and you do advantage, and we're, we're just like anything else. So that could be your sacrifice. Mm -hmm. just, just remind me again, because I I know that we did that before. I was going to use my, I used my fine set of fine clothes when yes. we were running from. Those the got destroyed, government. as I recall. They, I have a space they did. I, you've got. A, Okay. No, no, I know I rolled a chance. I said there's a chance that you'll destroy your fine yeah. clothes. I didn't think it, I didn't know if it did okay. get destroyed or I think not. One got I don't remember. Yeah, so no, no, I, th I think not. Yeah. yeah, so you still have that. Yeah. I have that. 
Can I use two items then? The set of fine clothes and the white bone engraving from the kobolds. That oh, interesting. Pieces. Okay, yeah, as sort of give gifts. authority, like, yeah, as yes. gifts, and also just to help drive the point, like, this yes. is the kind of thing you're up against as well. Like, you know. yeah. Okay, great. They, they, the kobolds made this. Okay. Made Which of you besides the lead wants to do the first roll to build up to this? Who's Who's got a, a skill, a plan, and an advantage in mind? Shall we get mine out of the way, just because, yeah. let's face it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so before you roll, uh, you're doing that sacrifice, so make sure we'll keep it on paper. Cross off that yeah. uh, that, that bone thing and cross um, off your fine yeah. clothes. So you're giving an offering to them. A set of fine clothes is gone, <coughs> and I will. Okay, I'm just going to write these things down. Yep. So this is vol, and this is advantage from bone, arch, and fine clothes. Yep. Don't roll yet. Yep. You're gonna have two d20s. What is? Is there um, anything about the world that you should get? I should give you another plus one or two on this particular roll that uh, you think something you know about the world or your character that you think should just give you a little bit of extra edge? Well, apart from the fact that they're artisans, so they'll That's what you said it, before. they'll no they'll um, appreciate more the the bone sculpt. Oh bone sure, bone yeah, I kind of like that. So you got an extra plus one yep. in your roll for mentioning that. Okay, um, what is your what's the pl what skill are you using? Uh, I'm using performance in this one. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Performance and tell about the log. Yeah, uh, going in. So is that? It's yeah. Plus why? Two. Why do you suspect yeah. us? Yeah. Of that, and your skill plus for that is two. Yeah. That is also very clever. So I'm going to give you an extra plus one because you're using another mm -hmm. world fact. So you got a plus two on top of that plus two there. So you got two for appreciate that. Two log detail. Okay, so performance, skill plus two, world plus two, you're rolling with advantage, yes. and you want to make a 20 to contribute more than just one. Here we go. And it's on, on advantage. So on advantage. Two of them. Let's see how badly this happens. Oh, you're kidding me. <laughs> oh, <dear>. Brother, <laughs> you have to stop. <laughs> Throw this hunk of shit in the bin, man. That's, that's the worst slice ever. That, I've got, enough, this one got the, got me got one before. Just, I've got to say yellow one with what an M on it. Yes. Now, the way we like to explain this with a low roll being cause of failure is like it's not because your skill is not like you're performing badly. It's just that your you, the tact for the reasons outside of controls is bad luck. Like you you take on maybe a particular style of performance that's maybe a bit sort of like stage and bombastic in the do city. Interpretive, yes. Yeah. 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 Like this, this oh, maybe would slay in the city, but these elves are like they're they're you know they're, they're just put off by your style. Clicking. It's very declamatory and sort of you know it's, it's sort of loud and they've started brash and just for bad luck you've picked a style that doesn't gel well with their culture, man. So you contribute, yeah. you contribute one bead to this upcoming roll. Okay, but thank you for your contribution. <laughs> All right, who is next to give it a go? Uh, yeah, I will. Um, since I'm using my survival skill, I suppose, um, and then I can highlight um, some of the things that we were doing like what? Pri pri uh, prior to the battle. Well, you know, um, setting up a trap to lure um, goblins in using our skills and spells and stuff to... Yeah, um, sure. Yeah, good. Is there anything in the, uh, during the skill challenge or anything about the, the details of, of the world that you know might be useful for girl attacks and you remember from your from your skill, uh, from the skill challenge of going overland? Um, I don't know, can somebody help me? I can't remember. Uh, really uh, what see we if you can remember. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But <laughs> Is it As you're going overland, anything that you encountered that might be useful for guerrilla tactics? Uh, well, wait, wait. Uh, so, no, by the time, yeah, by the time we reached... Mm. Okay, last if anybody has an idea... No, I, I can't remember what happened in that. Anyway, there, was was there was lots of vines and that were... The, the lay of the land. We, yeah, yeah. we saw how um, the coastline, how it goes in. We saw the... Uh, I want to say ravine. It wasn't a ravine. It was mm. um, how we... You know, found a way to sure. go above there, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. something that none yeah. of the other cobalt, another, uh, no, well, I guess how he set the trap with the log as well, yeah. Mm. Ah, yeah, sure, mm. yep, yeah, we mentioned that log, so that's great, yeah, so yeah, all that stuff. Another, okay, good, yeah, I think between those things, I'll give you a plus one. On this. And things that we, yeah, okay, yeah, so what is your survival skill plus? Three, okay, very good. So you've got one for mentioning sort of the the logs and the and the traps that you used. Think of your survival stuff. You're rolling with advantage. Uh, what gives you advantage? Are you using something? Uh, a spell um, slot? I or? will use my um, channel divinity. Okay. And channel divinity is a little bit weaker than spell. So let's say you lose you lose all of your channel. If you have two, you no, have only one. You channel. one. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So good. So channel divinity is is on the table. Good for that. Okay. Oh, Time. actually, actually, 
Yes. Can I take a step back really quick? Yeah. And can I say as something to help with, our, like to sh demonstrate our ability to be adventurous and um, yeah, yeah. And, and things. We went into that mushroom cave and we've all got, I think, elven jewelry from the mushroom cave. Ooh, right, yes. Very good. So tell you what, I, because you mentioned the, the, the elven jewelry, you're sort of handing that idea up to somebody else. So anybody who hasn't rolled yet, when you sort of mention the elven jewelry, we'll, we'll keep this as, as this mm. is right now. Well, the elven jewelry that you're, you're not sacrificing it. I'm going to give you one here, but if somebody else uses it, you might be able to squeeze some more out of you. Remember something more about the elven jewelry. So you just show the elven jewelry. This shows what kind of adventurers mm. you are and the, what, what, the, what mm -hmm. sort of survival crawling around caves can get you. Somebody else might be able to use this as well. So that's a good hint that you've given to somebody else. Mm -hmm. We'll give you a plus two on this roll. Cool. You're using survival. Yep. Go for it. Hey, man! <laughs> 10, 10, 13, 14, 15, if the, the plus one each is Yeah, the yeah, plus, yeah, 15. 15, total, total 15? You total 15. 15, ah, oh, so you contribute just the one. So that's a way of advantage, yeah, we're, we're looking for a higher roll than that. Uh, we're sure we did that, you had the three with your survival, so you roll plus three plus the two for the world plus, mm -hmm. and what else is advantage? Okay, that's all right. Result 15, you contribute one point to that. Mm -hmm. Okay, again, some not great luck on that. Um, I think it doesn't mean the silver jewelry is a bad mm -hmm. idea, so that definitely got some good things to carry forward. Uh, the, the thing with the logs is like, you know, this, they say, oh, like, the, the, the logs, they already made up their mind about whether the logs was useful or not. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that already swayed the crowd. Unluckily, that doesn't have much effect. That was Fogrim. Okay, who's got another contribution? All right, Gotta so get some wins on the board here to juice this up. Devil. I'm not gonna bring up the devil. <laughs> <laughs> That's the last sort of thing you guys forget. Don't bring up the devil. Uh, I'll, I'll bring up the fact that the elves jewelry we got off dead elves that were in, in the cave. I'm not sure, sure we brought up yeah, that. Yeah, 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 that's right. Um, I'm also going to speak to them in Elvish, which is not common, so it's uh -huh. like coming from them from like, que pasa, you pasa. Uh, okay, great. Uh, <laughs> the Elvish, because you brought the Elvish jewelry and, and because you're well, rolled in this well, I know that normally you can't do a sacrifice because you're out of spells, but yeah. if you sacrifice some of that, if you give some of that Elven jewelry, I will let you take advantage. I do not have Elven jewelry. Uh, I'm yeah, asking. I'll give, I'll give he, he can use mine. Yeah? Okay, yeah, somebody else can do that? Well, yeah. Okay, all right, so let's get advantage with the Elven jewelry. So just one packet, one one person's Elven jewelry should be crossed off. Who's, who's um, giving it? I can do mine because I have no other way of contributing mm. right now. You sure? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, that taken person. from Vol. Oh. Is that El advantage? Uh, and because Fogger mentioned it, hang on, I'll be advantage, give me a moment. Okay. No problem. Because Fogger brought it up. Good idea. Save the advantage there. Okay. Make it, make it count. You're speaking <coughs> Elvish, and, and what's your what's your skill that you're using? Um, I'm using history. History. Okay. Good. And uh, what is your plus on history? Three. Three. Okay. Good. And with speaking Elvish and all that stuff, uh, just you want to put some color on that? Like, what's make up a, some sort of historical account that supports this sort of guerrilla and melee sort of tactic? Are you telling a story of how that happened, or, or what? Yeah, I'm just doing, telling the story. Okay. Don't ask me to act it out. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> all right, all right. I'll give you, a, I'll give you a plus one for that. Look at that. At least the, you've got. Uh, you're using the the elven jewelry as a sacrifice. Speaking elvish. So I'll give you a plus one for speaking elvish. I think that definitely helps. So you've got one for speaking elvish. You've got three for your skill, and you're rolling with advantage because you're giving up some elven jewelry. Mm -hmm. Okay, go for it. Oh my god! We should be able to challenge someone else. Anything he touches is brutal, <laughs> brutal. <laughs> that might be disgusting. Oh my goodness! T please tell me again how I had the worst roll on that. Was that seven? <laughs> um, seven, was seven, Se seven was one. Of the yellow dice. Yeah. Well, sometimes <laughs> somebody even fail to reveal something. When they see that that jewelry, they're like, they're like. They, they get kind of horrified by it. This is just bad luck that I'm making up. Mm -hmm. That for whatever reason, like them, something about them as wood elves, like when they say that, but they reveal something they didn't know before, they say, that's from the Feywild. Like I that is what fame? elves from the Feywild wear. And we have heard that there are elves that want to bring the Feywild back. We are not down for that. We are wood elves. We are embracing the material plane. All these elves, elves that want to bring the Feywild back, that is the last thing we should do, be a disaster. That's fey jewelry. Are you allied with the elves that want to bring the Feywild back? Because we're not down with that. So just through sheer bad luck, you like stepped into this huge diplomatic landmine. But I'm going to reveal something that's rather hard Shite. to reveal. We, we, we yes. found it on dead. We found it on the dead. We don't care. 
Yes, and then, and, they want, and they want to know, it's like, where where did you find, like, is this, did you get this from the elves? They want the whole story. Did, yeah. So can can you can use that later on. So if you do investigation later on and bring this up, you might be able to get more information can out I of them. Can I them to say that we We'll do that later. Yeah, this is just, all, this is just yeah. all in the don't moment. Yeah. yeah. Don't lie. It's that. The roll of his battle. No, no, That would have worked. Fey jewelry. Yeah, part of... Part of a, a plan to bring the Feywild back here to the Material Plane. We don't like it. Yeah, they suck. I don't, I don't really, I don't really want to give away any more. But stuff on the you've stuff. you've uncovered a fact that may be very useful to investigate later on. Mm. This is something that you think that uh, that is hard to find out otherwise. Right, well, just don't speak. Don't look. Don't touch anything. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't interact with the next roll in any way. Uh, I believe. It's my turn. All right. Yeah, so as uh, I said, I'm going to use my athletics. Yeah, everybody, listen, please. Yep. I'm going to use my athletics. Yes. Skill check of plus four, and so I'm going to just do things like use showing them how they can use the ro- the uh, vines as like a rope to climb yeah, up. So yeah, 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 exactly. Their natural vine, and it doesn't harm oh, the nature. That's something I, like I really that. want to emphasize. We can oh, use nice. everything in the environment around you that's not going, and we can do it so it's not going to harm. <laughs> yeah. So you know. You, instead of you know trying to like clear a f- space for a field, I'm going to teach you how to ru- be able to run and dive and dodge around the trees. Make them use them like for shuttle runs to this sure. tree, to this tree, to this tree, and back and forth like nice. that. Okay, good. Yeah, um, wind sprints among the trees. And then um, on top of that, because I am a soldier, I know I've got that sort of ability to oh, organize. Yeah. I've got that, that um, o- ability to organize. I can teach them how to sort of take look at their 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 uh, people and sort of. Find the strength motion. Who should be at the back? Who should be at the front? Good. Who should be flanking on the sides? Awesome. And I'm so out of my military Two is the most you can get. So yeah, that's good. You've exhausted that, but also mentioning the vine. They oh, appreciate and I'm, I'm going to give up what, my what divinity. Advantage you get, I have yeah. to give up my uh, channel ah, channel divinity. divinity. Yeah. Now, I did ask last time, I should have, what sort of divine vibe comes, like channel divinity, you know, we can interpret this loosely. Does, is there a particular channel divinity you know, effect that you think is going to be useful? Or Preserve do you want to just generally, yeah. Is that, would that be? Yeah, that that's right. Yeah, yeah. Say affected being yeah, the fact that that, yeah, preserve life. Yeah. We are looking at how can we preserve your life, your society, mm-hmm. and, and keep you So you sort of give that safe. juice to it. Yeah, okay, yeah. good. That gives you advantage on this roll. Ooh, so, what is your vibe. skill plus for advantages for? <laughs> plus four. You've got two because you're doing the Don't Harm Divines and you've got the soldier background. Yeah. I just feel like we can't make the number at all, even if you roll a 20. Oh. Too late. Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, so it really? Well, don't, yeah. don't, don't look too far ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? I might get double, yeah, exactly. double 20s and exactly. it might be like no, it's that's special. That's right, that's right. Go for it. Okay, uh, and I'm yeah, going plus four, four plus, plus two, four. that's a six total. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. 14. 814, my goodness. I didn't say a word. I that things are going thing. a, things yes, are right. But you looked in this direction. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's what happened. <laughs> oh, oh my. That's so man, big. the dice have been punishing you in this one. Just mm. bad luck after bad luck. Every tactic that you're doing, this whole thing with the vines, you have someone's back like, well, it did, that sort of tore one of the leaves off. Did you notice this one? One of the leaves got torn off the vines. Like, there's this <laughs> real sort of bad blood in the background. It's getting stronger. And as, of course, you're seeing that, that you know, this, unless you pull it out, you can really see the, the crowd, this muttering that started with just rumors is going on that as you just sort of, you've realized that some of these faux pas you're making, it's like some people make a really big deal about it. It's all thing about the Feywild. They're simply, they seem to be overreacting. Things like climbing the vines are just bad luck, right? It's like, you know, one leaf falls off. They're like, oh, well, you know, that's not useful. But they all seem to be kind of really primed against you. So you're really getting a sense there's some sort, there's some sort of tide against you they don't yet understand. Based on this <coughs> final roll, we'll see. Even if you can't make the number, the depth of your successor, for how close you get to it, can reveal different things. You still want to do as well as possible. We have a fourth one here. Oh my goodness. All four contributors had terrible luck. You try to still make up your stands, right? You still try to make the, you still try to make the, the, uh, the argument. What can skill? I just leave the room for this one. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. Uh, I don't <laughs> believe that. You don't have no, 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 that no. Sometimes, if you do something really egregious, you might, mm. you know, we're just yeah, get no, rid of your character. No, no, no scapegoating. We can't be that superstitious. We can't put that scapegoating on we anyone. Can. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. We're <laughs> gonna swap characters for <laughs> this role just to. Shudian, what, uh, what skill are you using to make this argument? This is your attack um, bonus, yeah? Plus four f- on persuasion. Oh, for persuasion? I yeah, thought, yeah. Uh, I thought you're, uh, that's fine, but you could also use your, your weapon attack bonus. Just for this weapon just attack. For this oh, role. yeah, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, sorry, sorry, I used that, but I, that yeah. was just one of my arguments. So, yeah, so, um, yeah, so 
Okay, so you're, you're demonstrating the weapon attack, like when you engage with them with melee, here's how much how devastating you can be with the right weaponry. Yes. Um, your skill plus is five for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, what what how do you get an advantage on this? So being a noble um, in the position of privilege. Oh yes, that's right. Um, <coughs> um, I'm saying like could elves. Yeah, I um, they, they listen. We're um, with. We obviously feel like the the room is swaying against us. Right. Um, yeah, good, so good. I'm, you know, uh, you gave us you gave us silver, um, and as thing, I'm, I'm willing to give that back as a token. Oh, good, good. Like um, you know that we don't have ulterior motives. We weren't here for our own nefarious needs and gains. Um, we're not here for profit. Uh, we we just want to help, mm. uh, and uh, we um, we're appealing to your to your sense of uh, goodness, and um, we yeah we just want you to uh, to to be safe in the future, and uh, um, we want to sort of achieve that any way possible. Wow, I was moved by that speech. I don't know how you felt, but I thought that was really good. I'm going to give you plus three on this. I almost never give a three on that. Yeah, <laughs> that was great. That was great. I love, and you tied together a few things as well. But why the silver got tied back in, and knowing the room was sort of swaying against you, that was very powerful. I think so. Very well done. So you get a plus three on top of everything else. You got a plus five for your weapon attack bonus. You got a plus three for a very moving speech. And uh, your contributors are giving you a total of plus four, as we can see there. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so. <laughs> I'm not going to look what I <laughs> <laughs> And you have advantage, so you're going to roll with all that. So you're going to have five plus three plus four on whatever you roll with advantage. Okay, ready. No one look. Oh, oh yeah, that's hey, a decent hey, roll. 15. <laughs> 15, that's a good roll. Oh, yeah. plus OK. One. <sighs> Plus three, fifteen plus, plus yeah, <laughs> fifteen plus five plus eight so twenty-seven. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, nine, ten, twelve, <coughs> yeah, twenty-seven. Okay. Okay, twenty-seven. At least it comes within five, right? So mm -hmm. to fail by by more than five, you know, this definitely gets further downhill. You don't make it, right? So as it is, this tie comes <coughs> against you, but you get close enough that you get an idea of why this happens. So first of all, very good job, everybody. Let's just let the dice tell the story here. Like, the reason that this all... <laughs> the, the dice are trying to tell us something. That much bad luck that comes through. Sorry, I'm going to have to excuse myself for a second. Yeah. Oh. I've got something, I've got something like that. Oh dear, watch out. Yeah. Uh, bloody fuck. I'm just going to go, yeah, go yeah. outside and I'm going to cough. Oh, that's all right. It's okay if you cough in here. <laughs> no, please don't. Yeah, you can keep the door open if you want to hear this. So I think one of the best things to do here is to lean into this, right? The fact oh, yeah. you've tried really hard, but something is against you. Like almost like like maybe like it's almost a deity is against you, some sort of curse against you, you might conclude. It might be that this rumor against you is so strong that all these things that that you failed so badly at was was maybe blown up, like these sort of cultural offenses you committed were kind of primed ahead of time, you know, like these, you these, wrote <laughs> these things that happened. You, that might be the revelation. And feel free to be like offended, like despite putting your lives on the line for these elves and doing so much for them, their results like, nah, you know, we, we appreciate we appreciate what you're trying to do. We've got a lot of problems of our own. We don't really like uh, outsiders. At some point, what? Oh, it's fine. Yeah, door shut is fine. Oh, That's what, what are you doing here? Sorry. At some point, mother and father, you know, the, the, as the tide is turning, a couple <clears throat> significant things happen. So father, uh, you know, is the one up front, and he's like, uh, well, look, everybody, I, I, don't, I hear a lot of ugly stuff being said about these good people. Remember, they nearly died. Like, I don't know what would happen if we hadn't had these great heroes. And he's, he's kind of got a bit of a dull demeanor, and he looks a little bit confused, but he's really doing his best to talk about, like, these, these heroes, like, I think they got a plan. I, I think you know, I got, I think we got to hear them out. Maybe they should stay here for another day or two, you know. Maybe we just didn't really, we got off on the wrong foot. Let's get them rested. But just this tie is like, no, we don't want them here. They're going to bring more goblins, you know, to us and all that stuff. As, and he turns to, to his wife, uh, you know, Mama, can, can you say something about this? And she, she kind of rears up, she sort of eyes everybody. She looks kind of over in the distance, like she briefly makes eye contact with someone and sort of, sort of gives a nod. But by the time you turn, you don't see anybody there. And she's like, I don't think these people have anything that they can teach us. We're doing just fine before they showed up. They'll be lucky if they're able to spend the night here. I, I think they should leave right away, but out of consideration for you, Papa, all right, they can stay here tonight, but y'all got to leave early in the morning. And the meeting is over. Yeah. Mm. 
the meeting is over. Peach tea and but, play banjos. So, so, so tell me again, are we releasing the goblin now? <laughs> 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 you this yeah, yeah, that's well, well, I think that's we, right, we've got two yeah, of them. We only need one. Maybe <laughs> goblins like devil contracts. Yeah, I'll find back mama. No. All right. Well, the meeting breaks up. You can still have your long rest here. We'll cover that next time, of course, because uh, new people show up. So we'll do the long rest at the beginning of the next, sec next session. Mm -hmm. But uh, we can just talk a little bit about what happens in the immediate aftermath. First of all, you get XP. So you all get an additional 50 XP because a scene like this gives you XP. You know, there's no killing. There's no physical danger. There's moral. Your feelings got hurt. <laughs> but aside from that, uh, you know, because your hit points didn't get hurt, uh, it doesn't have as high XP as a quick amount of combat. That's still some XP that you got. Good job on that. You can trade with them here, but you every... Said 50? Uh, 50, 5 zero. You can trade with them. Uh, so in between sessions, you can trade with them. Uh, they will sell things that the Cobalts don't. Remember, the Cobalts said they won't sell you anything that can't be made in the machine shop. These elves are kind of on the opposite. They make everything out of wood and leather and stuff yes, like that. Stuff. However, because they're so shitty with you, it, you have to buy it at twice the normal price. Bastards. Okay. So you can buy it, but it's twice the normal price until you change their attitude in some future adventure. Now, all these things are malleable. You know, This is the story, and I urge you to lean into this, but it doesn't mean the story has to stay this way. Maybe you can get Nihilo back on side with some more work later on in Epic 2. So, the trade, I'll post that link about that, buying and selling. Uh, you can sell stuff to them. And the strange thing is, like, once you're selling, it's like, wait a minute, I thought they said they didn't have very much money. They're willing to actually give you money to buy things off of you. But again, they're going to be a little picky about what they buy off of you. It has mm -hmm. to be useful to them. They're not going to do it as a favor to you. So, if you're selling things to them, try to tell a story about why would elves genuinely find this useful to either <coughs> have or resell. Uh, then... In the morning, as you're getting it, nobody's, nobody's going to bring you breakfast in bed or anything. You realize you're warned to get out there in the morning. As you do, and as you leave Nyla Dell, you know, with this coldness all around you, there is a rustling in the bushes. It's Duck Duck, isn't it? No. It's Duck Duck. It's a horde of goblins and we can walk away. No, no, it's, it's a wood elf that you recognize uh, from the village who has caught up with you. Oh. Let me find this. Right. Uh, so, uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's, he's a wood elf, um, and uh, he's got kind of this mottled sort of pocked skin. Uh, he seems to be kind of a blend of sort of high elf and wood elf and all that, right? He's sort of a blend of the two because, you know, the, the two can, can intermix. So he's, he's got some features of both high elves, which, uh, which you are, mm -hmm. and the wood elves, which, uh, which you know, the village is made of. What did you do? Uh, no. <laughs> hey, Not that. <laughs> Not tonight. Have you been here before? Uh, yeah. And he comes forth and says, well, uh, I heard what you were saying about the, where you found that jewelry. And I, I'm kind of curious about it as I... Maybe if I just come with you, uh, I'd love to find out where you get that from. Uh, I'm sorry about how they treated you. I think that you made a lot of good points, and I, I just kind of don't fit in there anymore. I mean, this just kind of proves it, that I shouldn't be staying making apple cider or whatever the fuck I was doing, you know. Uh, uh, and you know, I smell you got some good drugs there uh, in, in your bag. <laughs> He's uh, I saw you laying up. You know, I want to, like, hang out with, I want to hang out with different people. I want to, like, get into mysteries. I want to solve mysteries. I want to find out, like, where that jewelry came from. I want to hear so, about this character's backstory in that voice I, the I, entire I, time. I just, <laughs> I just love to come with you, man. It's like, uh, how old are you? Oh, I'm I'm of age. I'm definitely of age. He seems like maybe as for a maturity level, he's probably like in his late twenties. Uh, okay, yeah. okay, that, that's, that's, that's the, that's the question. Wait, no, that's <laughs> as an elf, you know, I don't really know how fast elves mature, but he's got the personality of someone kind of in their in their in their 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 solid adult. Okay, is he like my age or like I don't know how old I am actually, but <laughs> uh, over he can be. Yeah, <laughs> it depends on how old you are. That's I've dead. Okay, I'm, so I'm he old. wants to he wants to come along. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Yeah, we can always throw at some enemies. But we need Kevin Potter. Yeah, like I'm, I'm, I'm not that great a fighter, but I know a lot of things. I, I read a lot of books. Yeah, I'm really into mysteries. I really know a lot of things about the world. I picked up some skills here there. I think I could probably help out. What's your name, kid? Evelios. 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 I V E L I I. Evelios. You just can't come up with that Evelius? name on the fly. No, I'm right down here. Evelios. 
I was listening to New York, actually. He sort of looks at you a bit insulted. What was it? Okay, Elish. Uh, it doesn't matter. But <laughs> Huckleberry. I'm just proving that I had written it down. <laughs> Elish <laughs> John, I prepared earlier. Exactly, Nanuriel. <laughs> Grace Tang. Nanuriel. <laughs> Elvish, Fre- Elvish Presley. Elvish Presley. <laughs> <laughs> He's from the South. Is he a bard by any chance? He could be a follower out of any <laughs> of you. He's bard. Uh, <laughs> if if you bard. want to, to see who gets the best fit with him, he's very intellectual, right? So it could be an intelligence check, but it could be a charisma check. So use either a charisma roll or an intelligence oh, roll. Let's give this a intelligence try. means you're trying to <laughs> entice him to be your personal. Player. I mean, he'll help the whole party, but he's going to be especially attached to you. What? What if you roll, it means that you're willing to have him as uh, he's going to become your follower. Charisma. What class are we looking at for? He, if you develop him, and you do that through a, a system, he'll turn into a sidekick of the expert type. There's uh, three different types of sidekicks. There's fighters, which are sort of like, you know, mm-hmm. firing a melee. There's sort of mages type spellcasters. There's experts, which are more like rogues and bards and things. That they might be good at uh, skill checks. Okay. He, he's a bard. I'm nicknaming him. No, he's I not a bard. He's, 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 <laughs> he's more, like a, a more, more like a scholar. Um, so he might be a college uh, scholar. I will buy him a loot if I so get he's it. Good or a battle, they He's good at learning. He, he yeah. knows. A, he knows a, quite a few skills. So it's experts, uh, if you develop so, that so, expert line, he's good at skill checks. So like across the board, will be good at. Yeah, you'll skills. pick like oh, we, like he's probably really good at history, for example. Dance. He's probably good so at, uh, at 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 uh, you know arcana history, nature. knowledge checks, and things like that. Yes, yeah, so maybe probably some nature. We'll roll be able to customize him later. Okay, so roll either charisma or intelligence. Charisma's low, but I'll give it. I'm done. This one becomes his leader. Oh yes. Uh, 18. Uh, 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 17. 17. 19. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. Yes. 20 again. Oh, boy. No, no, no. He, he got a natural 20. Fuck. <laughs> How do you roll such it. good rolls when it's like an inconsequential? Yeah, when it's not important. Yeah. Yeah. Don't need it. Jeez, man. Because I had too much pressure like on me you. before. I got 18. Like, this is, like, yeah. this is nothing, and you got a, you got a good roll. <laughs> I had too much pressure on me before. Julian gets as leader. Okay, good. <coughs> Thank you, It's a good thing you yeah, didn't yeah, yeah. 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 We need a bar. We need a bar. Yeah. Sign this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how'd you see through that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we knew what you were going to sign your, sign your adventurous contract. Oh, what does it now, say we're not quite at 930, but I know we have a lot of de- dedication to the map here, and if, we can all just go to the top now. But if, if people want to stay for another few minutes to say, like, oh, on the way back, you're going to go off the path. So by default, you just take the same path you took back. But you're at the table, you can divert yourself. As long as you're getting closer, there might be some square between Draw here and there that you want to check out. That's, uh, that's further north. That's, that's not in our And that's just, just in general. So feel free to, to, to well, leave now if, if you don't care about the map or you're in a hurry to get home. But those of you who want to stay for another extra five minutes, we can do a little bit of map. Stuff. Do we have to cross the river again? You don't have to. Yeah. No. Yeah, there, there's several ways to cross. Yeah. You're not in a hurry. <laughs> Last time you were optimizing the river. Let me just get some white background underneath this because it yeah. is quite transparent. And, and, um, so where... <laughs> so we are here. We're yeah. trying to get back to here. We traveled. Oh, I've just closed my book, but I think we, I believe we traveled across and up, basically. Yeah, so you went yeah. from here. So you went basically, you just went straight northeast. So this is a, yeah. a straight shot. We did go into ARI 19, which is um, underneath. No, no, it's this way. So we went up. We, yeah, we went, we were here in I 19. By the way, have a nice little shot. This is the kind of forest you're going through. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Very nice. nice. Yeah. So it's, it's quite quite dark, quite shady. It's like yeah. been, it's probably been growing for centuries. Oh, like that's so if, pretty. if it was ever, I can smell that picture. If, if, yeah, if it was ever cut down, it's been so centuries since yeah. anybody's yeah. cut yeah. down yeah. trees yeah. in yeah. all yeah. the areas. Yeah. 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 It's not quite primeval yeah. forest, yeah. but there are dinosaurs around. We were in I twenty. Mm-hmm. That's H twenty one, sorry. Um, and then we went to I twenty. So I is this column. Yeah, I'll, I'll actually confirm this because part of you wandering around, I'll only confirm things. So let me do that again. That's yeah. Yep. So, you, so the caves of chaos is I twenty one. No, sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I H twenty one. Okay, H twenty one. Yep. Yep. And, and then you went northeast to I twenty. The first time. Yeah. No, no. Oh, yeah, oh, look, I started drawing in. Yeah. Right. So you went northeast uh, to I-20. Yep. And then you went northeast again to J-19. 
And I've also got here J20 where we saw there was a placed yeah, place uh, that maybe windows symbol. because you've given us a detail because the, you've checked that uh, out. No, yeah, Cast I've transcribed quote, that to my book. folds of rock of warped land are in J20, which are under here. So, yeah. so we've so we have time to you have to walk into one square you haven't gone. You can walk into J20 and check it out more, and you all have to see what you do But is that not where you've installed the No, no, that was sort of down here. Oh, okay. So we must have just sort of traveled to that corner as we walked into there, because you did tell us about the warped Yeah, so you tend to see see large landmarks of all adjacent squares. So ah. if you saw that, yes, I probably described that as the next square over, you see some sort of large landmark. Yeah, so I've been down, down there. so I've got I20, J20, J19. So we've kind of gone around. It's great. I don't know. You push that in the middle for a second. I just wanted to see uh, on, the, on the video as people will see. The uh, map. Yeah, the map. Just, <laughs> can, can just, just for a moment. So this, some, this is a, a large map that, that unfolds. So you've actually yeah. gotten this from talking to other people at Caves of Chaos of years past. So thanks to Scott, who did, uh, did a lot of this, and a lot of other people from previous things about supplying this map. Uh, so but please do not take any digital co The digital copies are, are not allowed to be sent around here. So this is hopefully too vague for you to make a, a good digital copy. I just want to sort of show that to people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. And luckily, I had it half, only half, <coughs> of, like you know, oh, that's fine. tiny, tiny portion of the map. Then that's fine. Can, can I ask a quick question here? Yeah. Can our new new companion, who I'm alm already nicknaming Elvish Presley, <laughs> um, <laughs> does he know the area, and so he can give us the best? Very good. Yeah. So if you wander into one square, um, <coughs> you'll get a bonus for him because he's an expert. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, he'll he'll give a plus to your rolls. So we have a little bit of time. That Please. is there any Please one square that you want to <laughs> sort of take a sidetrack into on the way back to Kansas? I'll tell you so more about it. So you can, for example, go check what out about those, that, yeah, that, that nice warped land that, that, that you went to. You could mm -hmm. just go uh, straight, you know, straight mm -hmm. west to, to kind of get off. Like, what's to the west of the place you saw? Well, like, because like, we've, we've got no information there. Yeah. 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 So what's one square yeah, you want I'm to check out? I'm just more interested at the moment in trying to get here. Like we had. Like he had thought before. Yes. Before we yeah, so you can only move south or west from here because you, you want to get back to Caves of Chaos quickly. Hmm. Is there anything I explored? Yeah, well, so there's a square west. between. Let's go west. Yeah. Straight west from Aladdin. Go, go yeah. west. Okay. Mm -hmm. So as you go over, each of you can have uh, a, a little job, all right? So, this, so some of the, the stuff that you do as you travel, each of you gets to pick one thing that you focus on. One person needs to navigate that survival. Right, that's uh, a survival. <laughs> okay. Um, because that just means you're going true west and not get not Sorry, waste time getting right. lost. Yeah. That's one thing. Another job. So each of you can get to pick one job, and this is the thing that I'm describing as well, called montage play. Yeah. This is something that becomes yeah. important yeah. in yeah. Epic yeah. Two, uh, but also you can do this if you come in early. We'll start yeah. doing some of this montage yeah. play. Thank you. Oh, montage! Like a yeah, uh, travel with the montage. Meanwhile, Elvish is uh, yeah, playing like along in the background. Yeah, yeah, and we need to cut scenes. Cry kid on a on a world. Montage West Close, here. Close up scene. Good job. What's another good montage song? Rock, Rocky Horror. Yeah, yeah. Eye of the Tiger. Mm. There we go. Montage. So we've got, we've got a kind of rocky montage if they wanted to sign up to the the elves wanted to sign up to you know be martial fighters or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Hey, I I I did tell this guy when he um, got a scroll that find a way out, okay. he needed to sing. I was travel, travel, here we go. Of, trying to. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Forging. Uh, so no, one no, of you. No. So you, you can only take exactly one job. So oh, one has to be navigating if you want to have any hope. So somebody has to do the survival roll for navigation. Uh, one person can do treasure hunting. This is investigation or perception. You might be able to find just some loot or some interesting thing as you go. That's uh, investigate. If you're good at investigation perception, your job may be treasure hunting as you're going. Uh, one would be uh, you're using your perception to notice threats to make sure you don't get into trouble on the way. So that's somebody's job to be a lookout. Uh, foraging. Uh, if you do a survival roll, you can find food uh, as you gather. So you get some food uh, along the way as you travel itself. Uh, you could use charisma to talk to uh, a follower, for example, a you know, fellow PC with a free form, or to an NPC to sort of you know, engage an, an NPC follower to sort of uh, get more information or develop your relationship with them. So what's, everybody, what's, what's the job that everybody's interested in? Uh, I'll do the foraging. I'll hey, look for treasure. Right. I'll talk to the people. Hang on. 
All your jobs are left over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and two, you two of you can do the same job. Uh, just at least who's doing the navigation? Someone with survival. Uh, yeah. Uh, look, my yeah, survival don't... and my perception are both plus three, and I think that's the, that... all the all the skills that were mentioned mm -hmm. were those two. So it doesn't really matter which one I take. Yeah, Actually, survival take... forging. Yeah, because if the these weren't doing it, you've got the highest survival, survival. out of us yes. three. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah even me. Oh, I've got plus yeah, yeah, one. Yeah, plus one. Yeah. Plus one, right there. Yeah, yeah. I had no yeah. idea. Okay, yeah. well then, that one's what? Which one? Which one? What skills for navigation? Mm. For, for navigation is yeah. survival. Navigation, yep. okay. Cool. <laughs> We've got the map anyway. So you're going to navigate? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. That makes sense. Does that okay, give me an on, advantage? Man. Navigation? Uh, no, well, no, it tells, you, it tells you where to go. You've already got the advantage by knowing which route to go. But that still give the advantage. <laughs> um, so, so we roll in Hang on, I'll get to that in a okay, second. So we'll write everything so. down. Mm -hmm. uh, so Saryath, we got Fagram, we got Smarag. Uh, who haven't I named and what's the job are they doing? Um, I'm doing the um, talking to NPCs. Ah, that's right. Yes, exactly. Yeah, right. So Is it charisma persuasion or just charisma? <clears throat> uh, this would be this would be just plain charisma, but, okay, uh, yeah. but that, that's fine. <laughs> Uh, uh, but we'll all roll sort of in, in a certain turn. Uh, mm -hmm. There's somebody, what job are you doing? Uh, let's do... So uh, Fogram's foraging, uh, Vol is in, you can duplicate on things. Vol is engaging with the NPC, Saryeth is treasure hunting, Shmarag is... Protection? Or like, sort of, is that valuable here? Oh like, um, uh, yes, that would be noticing threats. Threats, yeah. Yeah, okay, so Shudian, okay. So first let's start with navigation. So how well, how much time and how much uh, trouble can you possibly get to Shmarag? So go ahead and roll a, a uh, check on that. 13. Okay, so 13, okay. So you lose a little bit of time, but you're generally going in the right direction. So a couple sort of wrong steps. The force is very thick, um, so a little bit of extra time is gone, but you don't, you, you don't have a big failure on that. So good success to set up for the next rolls. Uh, let's say Shudian, uh, this is where now the threats, because you're a little bit lost, it's a little bit harder to, to avoid threats. So let's get a good roll from you to notice threats is perception. Okay. 14. Uh, plus your, plus yeah, plus your, uh, perception is three, so 17. Okay, 17, ah, good. You, as you're sort of wandering the wrong way, you hear some sort of beasts and things. There's like this, there's a, there, there's a call of, of sort of cougars and things off in the distance that you think uh, finally you were, with your perception, you're able to hear. You're able to steer away from having a cougar attack. That's okay. very good. All right. Uh, sorry, yes. Uh, however, near the cougars, you might discover something. What is your investigation? Plus five. Investigation or perception, actually. Uh, investigation plus yeah. five. Okay, good. <laughs> <It's eight>. <laughs> <laughs> no, as it is, you try to figure out maybe where the cougars might have had some victims or a lair or whatever else, but you can't really put it together by reading the signs. <laughs> you decide you're wasting a little bit too much time, so you move on. No chance to get any treasure. Fogram, you're foraging as you go. You're now in fertile land. Oh, that's mm. eight. An yeah. Eight, okay. So I really go hungry. <laughs> <laughs> you each get one ration, so each write down one food ration. What do you find? Oh, Fogram? yes. What type of food ration? Yeah. But, um, like natural fruits or something like I'm that. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. yeah. So you just write down some rations if you want to no, add I'm color. This mentioned fruit. Nice natural fruits, but it's just one ration. Add one to your <coughs> rations. Okay. Good. Meanwhile, Vol, you've been talking with Evelios, and uh, go ahead and roll a charisma roll. What's your roll, fucking? Time? <laughs> Do it. Hey, this could have a big effect. It's like a free uh, six. Three move. Six plus two eight. <laughs> plus an eight. Good. Uh, yeah, he gets into the drugs, you know, he's not making a whole lot of sense as you're going, yeah, he's, 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 a, he's a nice mellow guy, but as it is, yeah. <laughs> I'm still calling him Elvish President. You're, 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 still, you're still bonding with him. Uh, yeah, so you're a little bit more friendly with him, but you don't make a huge advance there. Yeah, okay, yeah, 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 here's what you see. Want, as long as you give cool. him what he wants. So you went straight west, yeah? Mm -hmm. So from Nile you go straight west, you're now in I-19. Uh, I-19 is thick forest. You see that uh, to the north, I-18 to the north, because <coughs> we're in the I-19, but Avelios, you don't see it, but Avelios says, oh, by the way, uh, to, to, to the north of here is, is a swamp. Yeah, it's got a real bad vibe, man. Like, the, I went over there and tried to get some mushrooms. First of all, the mushrooms didn't work. They made me really sick, and I didn't really give her a good trip on them. They, they weren't the glow mushrooms you're talking about either. They're just regular mushrooms. They taste like shit. But it gets kind of swampy out that way, and it's just got a bad vibe. Like, I just don't go north from here because it's just bad vibe, man. Just a bad vibe. Presley, I'm going to ask you something here. Are you related to Job Job by any chance? <laughs> 
Oh, no, I've not heard that no. one, actually, no. no do, do we know if there are any things like rodents of unusual size in this swamp? <laughs> uh, I think so. I mean, swamps, this, you know, kinds of bad creatures are kind of, you have know. You, have you seen some of these bad creatures, or have no. you just got bad vibes? I just got kind of bad vibes, you know, from it. It's just, Did it's you just... eat the mushrooms before you got the bad vibes? No, no, I got the bad vibes first. I think that sort of, like, put me in the wrong mood for the mushroom trip that I was going to have, because, yeah, I just, I kept... I don't know, I just, I just got this sort of dark kind of, it's like a dark kind of energy up that way, is what I'm going to say. Yeah. Did, you, did you eat the mushrooms, or did you just lick the mushrooms? No, well, I ate the mushrooms. Okay. You gotta eat them, and licking them doesn't do shit. <laughs> So did, now you're to the true? north, <laughs> to the north in I-18. So you're in I-19, but you know that I-18 is swampy and he has, quote, a bad vibe. <laughs> Sorry, did we work out if there are any creatures or are there any known sort of creatures Nothing or dangers? Is. No, he's, a, he's, a, he's, you know, he's, no, he's, 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 he's helping you out a little bit. Right there, but and you wouldn't no, even know that if you didn't no have him, you wouldn't even know about it. There's nothing to see. Okay. Yeah, okay. No, 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 no. He also says... Uh, so to the west of here, right? And you talk about H19, so because you're now, again, you're still in I19, right? Let me check yeah. out. Yeah. To the west of there in H19, uh, that's where the Goblin Trail goes through. So when the Goblins, when they're marching to the north, right? This is if they, if they, if they go up, uh, I don't know, I heard you talking earlier about some sort of Goblin Camp. This must be a trail that leads to that Goblin Camp, but don't go there because the Goblins, they'll go up and down this trail a lot. And, you know, they sneak through so they can ambush you. So, yeah, a little bit west of here, not a good place to go. You know, I'm not one called a bad there. vibe, but it's called dangerous. You know, if you see a trail, if you follow that trail, you're probably going to encounter goblins. So now you know something about the trail they're following, north side. So this trail, the trail kind of goes north, south, into, south to where the, those caves, the canyon cave, or whatever you talk about that, that we're going to, it goes south from here. So you think now there's a trail that goes basically down column H, north, south. Ending in the case of chaos and going north from there, some distance. Whoa! Whoa but he, he doesn't know. Sorry about that. But he doesn't. He doesn't know uh, uh, where the trail goes once he goes north. Well, at the moment, they they would only be going south because they have to. They go both north and south. So they travel north and south. There are south. No villages I, I know it can go north and south, but at the moment, all the goblins would have would be going south to go to that ceremony. Ah, yes. So they would be at the very moment. You're right. True. Mm -hmm. they they they've cut off the sweep has yeah. stopped them from going north. You're very right. Does it mean it's like, like a path? For us to follow that path? Oh, uh, still, I mean. We could still get him. Yeah, I mean, if I could come up from behind him and stumble on their camping, I think it'd be a bad idea. Him. You know, so I don't think we should go west of here. I think we should just go south, and south is a square that you've already been in. So, yeah. so back yeah. to, uh, to I 20. Can they, can they, can Ivelios tell us what's on the northwest or the northeast from where? Oh, uh, well, northeast, yeah, north of Niladel is, is forest, you know, it's a good place for hunting and stuff. It's quite fertile there. That's where we do you know, some, of, uh, some of our best you know, wood collection and stuff. So, yeah, it's just good land. J, that's, that's the J18. Yeah. And southeast, there's really weird warped land off the southeast of where we are right now, but you already know about that. Yeah. What about, um, so we've traveled oh, here, you know, I, I heard I heard that, like, that, that you really got to stay away from there. There's, there's, there's bad elves. That's where the bad elves come from. In H18? Uh, in J J twenty, where those warp that warp oh, land. Okay, is. Okay, what okay, do you okay, mean, bad okay, elves? Yeah, well, uh, I just don't like to say very much, but the one that bring the fame back. Oh, yeah. Bad yeah. elves. I just, so, like yeah, the elves that might have. Um, I, I've, I've just been told just just stay away from there because that, that's that's where that's where bad elves are. As, are they the high elves by any chance? The ones who don't like mushrooms. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, the ones that might have, might have turned the other elves against uh, us. I, I don't like to say anything bad no. against anybody. Uh, I mean, maybe she forgot to mention it. I just, uh, he gets kind of embarrassed. And so like, I don't know, maybe that wasn't the right thing to say. So he's, he's, trying, to, he's trying to backtrack on it. And can he see in J18, H18, sorry, which is northwest of the square we're in? Well, that's where the Goblin Trail happens, right? Goblin Trail. Yeah, Just Goblin confirming. Trail. More. Any of those little swampy, there's right. some stepping stones across where it gets swampy. Oh, stepping stones in the swamp. There you go. A little bit of map exploration. <coughs> mm -hmm. Thanks, everybody. We will stop there. So, uh, for that little exploration, you get another 25 XP for doing a little bit of land exploration. I just went away. Look at that. My little coin shot. Right up in the top corner. Uh, someone passed me a wolf cup, please. Thank you. 20. Oh, 25 XP for you to lay the land. Uh, I'm just racing crap. these instead of just writing them scratchily. <laughs> well, that's what I was doing. No. Are, you, are you not? <laughs> no, look at them all. Yeah, no, they're all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we've got a races, man. Yeah. <laughs>
I think it's because when, when I started, I wasn't right. sure how it was going, so I'm like, I'm just going to run it all down. Yeah. Hey, thanks, everybody. Yeah. I just wanted to fit that in, give you a little taste of it. There's a lot more of that kind of travel, so if that yeah. interests you, there's a lot more of that comes around, and of course, a very big map that you can start to explore. So, yes. uh, we did have a quick combat, Master. thanks to some good perception, Super avoiding massive. the Krugers, and resolution. Yeah, so next session. So, next session, you don't actually get to vote what's next because you've you explored all three main arcs. You've learned about the Reds, you've learned about the Silvers, you've learned about the Goblins. Now, there's, now you feel like you're you're as ready as you're ever going to be to get into the Shrine of Chaos. And we've all Is had long a... rests as well. You're going to have a long rest, so we'll start off next session with a long rest. Yeah. I like to start I'll sessions with a long rest. And we'll be leveling up next as well. Like, yeah, so if you've already got that, so so make sure you definitely bring your level 3 character uh, sheet. If you don't have it ready, you'll be going in as level 2. I will, you know, basically, from a meta perspective, I will adjust the... Uh, the adventure downward a little bit if, if nobody's actually brought their level three sheet. So I won't screw you over for not doing your sheet, you know, so don't stress. Mm -hmm. But it'll just be the story will make more sense to be better, a little bit more fun if if as many of you as qualify mm -hmm. are level three. So come early to show me your sheet or send it to me in Discord. And is going to the Shriners now, is that all like our one and only opportunity? Like it's now or never kind of thing? You're not sure. So, if you want to do any shopping with the, who, what you know from the kobolds and from the elves, this might be your last chance to do shopping and trading. Once you get in there, you're not sure if you'll be able to pop in and out. That's something I know that you don't yet. Um, I did have on my sheet, and I think it was from the week that uh, happened on the week that I wasn't here. Uh, two items. Yeah. Now, was that two items that I've got to choose and just let you know? Oh, oh, that's right. You've been for the previous session, but you missed, missed the session where I actually yeah. handed it out. Yeah, just come a little bit early and remind me of that. I'll look it up. Yeah. I'll, I'll see what I can do, but I'll message you on Discord about it. Okay, about yeah, Because no, I, I don't know if I'll be able okay, to Okay, no, that's uh, fine. Yeah, message me on yeah. Discord I'll do it, yeah. So consider that this might be your last chance between sessions to do any shopping, trading, selling, to remember the things I sent before. Mm -hmm. And uh, the only thing I'll add to that is now you can buy stuff from the elves, but it's at double price if it's something the kobolds can't sell you. Cool. To shop, to sell. Okay. I hope you enjoyed watching us teach Dungeons & Dragons to absolute beginners. Want to know more about how we do it? Then support our nonprofit mission. Unlock extensive how-to videos and use the Courage & Chaos method yourself by using free materials that we provide. You can get all that at the link that you see here. That is tinyearl.com slash teachdd, or you can click that link in the description. Of course, please like, share, and subscribe. We're going to come out with these videos every two weeks in this series, so I will see you again soon.